All right, it's seven o'clock, so we can be prompt. Since it looks like, let me just quick count one, two, three, four, five. Uh, and we, six, looks like we got our quorum. Um, Annalise doing her hair. All right, sorry, I got a couple screens, so I gotta float back and forth a little bit here, but we all understand that. The first thing you do when you get on Zoom, you fix your hair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We don't need Everybody. we don't need mirrors. We don't need mirrors anymore. That's good. <laughs> no, I swear. <laughs> Everybody fixes their hair. <laughs> you could have just fixed your hair, you're still fixing your hair, I see. Um Especially Todd. And Tony. <laughs> and prepared. Yeah. All right, I'd like to call the, uh, the Deerfield Planning Board meeting to order on December 7th, 2020 at 7 p.m. And let's start with a roll call to make sure we've got our quorum. And I'll go around um, on my screen to see who's here. I'll say your first name if you can say your full name and say you're present. Denise. Denise Mason here. Rachel. You're muted. Rachel Blaine here. <laughs> Anna Lee. Anna Lee Wolf Cool present. And Mary. And Mary Cloutier present. Max. Max Antis present. And uh, Paul, Paul, Alice, absent, John, wait, I am present. <clears throat> so let me just go over the agenda for this evening. So that's six, six out of the seven planning board members are here. Thank you. So as we know, meetings normally held at the municipal offices are being held remotely with adequate alternative means of public access where required public participation provided in accordance with the governor's March 12th, 2020 order. So this is on Zoom. So everybody that's here obviously made it. Um, so the agenda is called to order. We identified board members in attendance. We'll review mail, we'll review minutes if available. Then we have a continuation of a public hearing of a court ordered remand on the revised application of South Deerfield DG series LLC for a site plan of approval. Uh, and a stormwater permit. Then we have a public hearing, site plan review from Dale Whitney regarding the use of 250 Greenfield Road, map 122, lot 24, as an antique antique store. Then we have another public hearing, uh, site plan review for 253 Greenfield Ro Road from aromatic fillers to utilize the existing building as a new client showroom design and development of new products, testing and light manufacturing of scented products, which includes candles, reed diffusers, hand soap, sanitizers, et cetera. Then we have a fourth public hearing. Holy smoke. Formula-based business bylaw amendment and formula-based definitions, which have been proposed by the Deerfield for Responsible Development. Then if we're still awake, we have old business, which is a discussion of revised bylaws related to accessory dwelling units. Any new business, any other business not reasonably anticipated, set a date for the next meeting and adjourn. So it sounds like a heavy agenda. Do planning board members have anything to add or subtract? John, I do actually. The accessory dwelling was something that I had put on the agenda and I feel like um, it's a long night. Um, so I would like to not discuss that tonight. I'm not ready to go into depth tonight and put that on the top of everything else that's happening. I, I did mention this to Chris Curtis earlier uh, last week and he was, he might join us. Um, but um, yeah, we do need to talk about that seriously and it doesn't, can't something, it's not something we can do in five minutes at the end of the night, so. Right, um, like if I have to go unprepared and I have all my materials, but I don't think that, I, I don't think it's the best time yeah. for it. All right, but it is something we want to get to, so we'll, it's, it's good to be there. Um, we did receive mail 
earlier in the week. Um, Today's Monday. I mean, sorry. It was amazing. <laughs> wow. It's only Monday. Like California? Um, we did. We flew nonstop. Most, wow. wow. Most of, How was it? How was the let's, flight? Um, I got to remind people to put Can themselves on mute. Otherwise, I will. Hello, people. On the plane. Participants. In Hello, stop talking, people. Ways, coming and going. You want to? You, you, can, you can mute them, John, as host. I know. I'm trying to. I see. muted her. Thank you. I was trying to find who it is. Yeah, I got it. It's yeah. Thanks, Jen. You're welcome. All right, uh, planning board members. You see any mail that you wanted to review tonight? We, we've received several documents. Most, some, most of them have to do with things we're going to talk about, I think, tonight. So. Right. Mail from Montague, mail to Greenfield. Yeah. So I think we're good to go. All right. And minutes. So we got, um, we did get some minutes. Anne Marie. And Mary, do you want to say something about them? I, I gave you a little feedback. Um, <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I, I got your feedback and I know that they're long, but I feel like um, the what we're, I tried to summarize everything that wasn't um, sort of experts um, speaking or the public speaking or Mr. Costa speaking, um, because I feel like um, especially around this topic, people really want to have a voice. They really want to know that their voice is heard. I feel like um, it's also an accessibility um, because it's uh, people want this information and I feel like this information should be out there. Um, people are less likely to watch the whole, or some people may be less likely to watch the whole recording than to read. Um, so I just wanted to try to be accurate. I just wanted to try to give voice to people who really um, want to want to be heard and I want to be accurate so I don't know I know that they're long but that's my explanation uh they're not always going to be like that I mean it was a lot of work um but I felt like it was important this time so, so I can't disagree with you um what the other planning board members did did people read them are they prepared to discuss them mm -hmm. and make any no. changes and vote on them no. No, no, I, I tend to agree when I was reading, I thought, wow, this is a very long transcript, but I, I agree with Anne Mary. I think it's such an important uh, topic that I appreciate the time and effort that she put into that. But yeah, I, I agree. I mean, I don't think all meetings would warrant that type of, and I don't think that she- There's would. not enough time in the day to do that exactly. for every meeting, but- <laughs> But thank you. They were really comprehensive. Thank you. I also, I also would say that in um, the event of something that has been so long um, enduring with so many different um, mutations along the way, not the least of which is the, the um, census of our board, that that was helpful. So I appreciate that too. Thank you. So does anybody want to make a, a, a motion and a second? I move we accept the meeting notes as, um, yeah, as presented. Uh, can I just add something in there? I know that my, a lot of, oftentimes my name says Denise Larson Mason. And at one point, I think Anne Mary put Denise Larson. So I just don't want people to be confused. So that's the only correction. I'm I would sorry, I will go back and- No, 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 that. That, that's fine. I just, you know, just for, yeah. So okay. Rachel, these are the minutes from, uh, November 2nd. Meeting. November 2nd, and as amended. Amended with uh, spelling for my last name also. Right. <laughs> I do find and replace, and they don't always get them all. I'm sorry. Right. So we had a um, motion by Denise. Do we have a second? Actually, motion by Rachel. Oh, sorry. Motion by Rachel. We have a second. I second. Any discussion? All those in favor, we should go around. Denise? Yes, Denise Mason, yes. Rachel? Rachel yes. Annalie? Annalie Wolf Cole, yes. And Mary? And Mary Cloutier, yes. Max? Max Antis, yes. And John Waite, yes. So we accept the minutes from November 2nd. Uh, 
Uh, okay, let me go on to, uh, I'm gonna open the continued public hearing. So let me read that. I'd like to open the continuation of a public hearing of a court ordered remand on the revised application of South Deerfield DG series LLC for site plan approval pursuant to section 5400 of the zoning bylaws and a stormwater permit pursuant to chapter 155 of the town code for the development of a 9,318 plus or minus square foot dollar general retail store and associated site improvements on an approximately 1.99 acres site located northeasterly of Mill Village Road and westerly of Greenfield Road in Deerfield as further identified in the town assessor's records as map 132 lots 29 and 30 situated in the commercial zoning district C2. So that is opened. So we have some new information has come out since our last meeting and since we continued it to tonight. And um, we got a letter from the applicant asking if this hearing could be continued tonight in lieu of a letter from DEP, Department of Environmental Protection, who uh, sent a letter saying that there's uh, potential wetlands on the site. And I believe if I read it correctly, it's referring, the, it's referring it back to the Conservation Commission who should delineate the wetlands in light of potential wetlands and delineating them that might change some of the uh, characteristics of the site and, and then also the site plan. So that's when the applicant then sent a letter asking to be continued tonight. I spoke to our attorney um, who uh, what would have been prepared to be here and we said that that, that makes sense in, in lieu of the new information. So um, are there any questions about that? And um, if so, or if not, we could, we can see what we want to do as a planning board. Annalee? Um, it seemed like initially when we were talking about the remand hearing that there was a um, very strong statement that we had to have a decision by a certain number of days. And um, I guess I'm just puzzling about that because I, I'm in favor of the process that we're talking about, but it doesn't jive with what I remember of that. Yeah, if you, if you remember the other, the applicant was, would have liked to have a decision in our first or second meeting and, uh, but did agree to having a, a third one. And now it's them who have asked for the continuance. So I think that's, that's not on us anymore. It's, uh, it's, uh, they would, they would, they requested it. So it. So it wasn't part of what the court required that we had to have a decision by a certain date? No. Okay, thank you. So I guess I, uh, hearing no more discussion, I would uh, ask if someone wants to make a motion to accept the uh, request to continue this public hearing. And I would put a date certain as our next, uh, we, we could put our next planning board meeting date. January 4th. Which is the first Monday of January, January 4th. Mr. Waite, uh, if I might be recognized with a question. Uh, sure. Speak your name, please. Uh, Nick Orsini, uh, 34th Air Street. I was just wondering if um, this does require a site plan change, would that technically negate the remand order as the entire plan change and they'd have to satisfy every single aspect of the site plan over again? I don't know that you'll be able to answer that, but I would, I would like an answer maybe to come out when you're able to get it. That that's what will happen is we will get the answer when we're able to get it. I think a lot of it has to do with um, what if any changes would be would be necessary. If certainly I would, I mean, I know in past experiences, if the site plan changes a lot, then it would go through another process. The definition of a lot, I don't know what that is at this point, so. Thank you very much. That's my own wording too. That's not a, <laughs> a Massachusetts law. Yeah, thank <laughs> but, you. All right, planning board members, a motion to continue. 
I move that we continue the um, public hearing to our next planning board meeting tentatively scheduled for January 4th, 2021. I second the. Any discussion? I think the other thing I should add is that this, um, just to clarify the, um, the previous, uh, the CONCON looked at this site many years ago and at the, the last time we had this in front of us two and a half years ago, it was under that decision by the CONCOM that, that um, the NOI, the notice, notice of intent that they could move forward and then that expired. So they needed a new one. And um, I'm not exactly sure how it kind of went down but instead of the CONCOM doing it, the applicant actually asked DEP for a decision and it was the DEP uh, letter that says it looks like there is wetlands and I, I believe another citizens group um, also asked DEP to give a ruling on the right of way because you, you know this property is a right of way uh, that the state owns and then also the property that's uh, private property and so it seems like both of them have some potential for wetlands and they're obviously related so that's why it's going back to the CONCOM so so before right. we before we um, go on, is this a p potential for a joint meeting with CONCOM or is this going to be that the timing on that is seems a, uh, like another hold up complexity? Yeah, I guess that's a good point for the the, the site plan review wouldn't have to be a joint one, but the, because no. we have the stormwater right. uh, permitting agency that would overlap with what some of the, what the CONCOM, it's a little, wetlands is a little different than stormwater, but yet a lot of it goes together. So yeah, we should probably talk to the CONCOM and if we can have use some of each, each other's information, that makes sense. Yeah. All right, so that would, that would be just something we could look at going forward to talk to them. I know their, their meetings are on another day and I don't know if they have one scheduled for December or not. I believe they were yeah, have one scheduled for December 15th uh, or 17th, maybe get to check the calendar prior Thursday. to our next one. Yeah. So we have a motion and a second. All those in favor of continuing the hearing um, on DG uh, South Deerfield DG series, please say aye. Denise? Denise Mason, aye. Rachel? Rachel Blaine, aye. Anna Lee? Anna Lee Wolfcool, aye. And Mary? And Mary Clear, aye. Max? Yeah. Max Antis, aye. John wait, aye. Thank you. So <laughs> we will move along. Um, Mr. Wait. To our next, yes. Um, Tim Hilchey, I am a member of the Conservation Commission and I just wanted to add that um, uh, the, two, the two SDA reports that you referenced um, you mentioned that there are wetlands no that are subject to the wetlands protection act. It doesn't say exactly the extent of the wetlands. So we'll probably need to have um, some sort of application from the applicant. Uh, then we'll need to do a delineation in the winter. That can be difficult. So um, just wanted to mention that it could be a considerable wait before we can actually figure out what's happening on the on the property, assuming that the the um, determinations by the Department of Environmental Protection are accurate. Thanks, Tim. All right. All right, I'd like to open the next public hearing and that is a site plan review from Dale Whitney regarding the use of 250 Greenfield Road, map 122, lot 24 as an antique store. And we have we received um, information about this during the week, and I believe the applicants are present. So um, if the applicants would like to give us a little overview as I sort of pull up some of our paperwork. Um, Dale, who's going to present this? It will be me. I will, I'll speak. My husband is here, but Excellent. I will speak. Um, for those of you who don't know, I currently have a 16,000 square foot antique shop on Main Street of Greenfield, and it is flourishing wonderfully. And we have um, many people asking if we were going to expand. And with the Gables restaurant is perfect 
for what we want to do. And especially because it's all on one floor, um, it would be done in a very wonderful um, way so that we handle things like high end and low end items. Um, and we help 60 people to be able to sell their wares. Um, we also in Deerfield will have a nonprofit section where we will be um, holding inside um, small events to send help to th in things like wounded warriors, um, homeless families in need, um, and also some pet care that uh, if there is a need that we'll be sending it to. We do get a lot of donations even at our greenfield space now. And this is what is going to be used for going outside and helping the county, Franklin County, Hampshire County, any counties that are in need of help. And um, I do that now on a regular basis, but I've now actually opened um, a nonprofit to go along with um, Whitney Hill at the Gables. So it will be something I think that the community really will appreciate um, on both ends. Thank you. Can you tell us a little bit more about the, the building and what your plans are with it? We have a little more, I think, than 15,000 square feet. Um, the nonprofit area is going to be in the back section and all the remaining areas are going to be cleaned up and used as booth space. And I worked for Yankee Candle for many years and I set up um, storefronts in Chicago. And I also went and set up in um, Indiana. And so I have experience in developing ways to set up individual booths for individual vendors. So let's say you wanted John to open a spot, you can come in and pay us a rent, you can do and hold whatever types of sales that you would like to hold it within that section. And then you would get the profits from that. Um, we have approximately 60 to 65 spaces that would be able to be opened up, um, which brings in a lot of revenue to individuals who can't go out and open up their business by themselves, right? for instance. Um, there is room outside for approximately uh, over 100 vehicles for parking. And in the summer months, if we possibly could have small outdoor um, quality done fair outside, um, that would be great. But that's just another way, especially I was hoping to do that for the nonprofits so that we could have small events held. Um, in which even the townspeople in the community can get involved with. Does that answer it? Or do you need more detail? Well, just we all, um, well, I think a lot of us sort of know the building and, and the paved parking area there. Are there any upgrades, improvements? Plan? It is going to be painted and all of the shrubs around are going to be cleaned up. Um, I do believe Doug has done a great job trimming them down right now. There is repair that's going to be done to the outside of the building and all those repairs will be done um, in starting in the spring and it's the, the building is going to look very very nice and hopefully bring it back to what it used to look like a long time ago we're not going to change the structure we're not going to make it look any different from the outside we're just going to clean it up paint it make it look really good really presentable and we'll have very nice signage in the front May I ask, oh, sorry, Jay. No, go ahead. Quick question. So when you do outdoor events, will you have to get permitting for each of those outdoor events? That would be, that would be a question that I was going to ask if I needed to or not. My guess is probably, and that's fine. So that I could be specific, all right, this, on this weekend, we're holding an event for Wounded Warriors. Um, I may even have some speakers there if, if I can, um, but there's so many things out there, so many needs in our community that's that's needed. And I just want to try and do a little tiny bit um, to help give back to some of these people. Um, but I'm not 100% sure how Deerfield works with that. I've been in other towns where you did not have to get a permit, um, but 
in Deerfield if we did, then and that would be fine also. I'd be willing to do that. So I just want to just some procedures here. So this site plan review, as opposed to some others, it's it's not about expanding the building or changing the footprint. It's really it's a change of use. It's just a change of use. It is why you're coming to the planning board, and we are the permitting um, the, for the special uh, for the site plan review. And then you also are, um, need a special permit. What special permit are you applying for? I'm not 100% sure. Uh, I was just told I had to apply for it. Um, and if actually, someone else from from Deerfield asked the same question. It isn't a special permit that I need, and we didn't know why I had to go for it for that. But if I have to, I will. Um, we're not doing anything special. The only thing we're doing is transforming it from a restaurant slash um, lawyer's office to an antique shop. So I would like to call upon our our guide on some of these issues. Jennifer, do you have some? Um, I believe minor. it's because of the square footage of the space. Do we have uh, notes from the building commissioner? On the application, no? Not on the application. That's why the application is very, it's four pages. I don't, so, I don't Maybe we could look because there were some things that I believe that um, the building commissioner and Sue had um, requested the applicant and the completeness of the application. I, I finished what they they sent me. They said, please fill this out. And all it was was what I just explained to you. Um, I do know that I have to get a um, the fire chief to go through um, and make sure that it is up to code that we do have, um, I don't know if I have to have sprinklers, but hardwired um, fire alarms that go directly to the fire department. Um, and I don't have it written here. I think that was the only thing was that that had to be done because the town, let's see, the post office was there for a period of time, correct? They were there a few years back and they rented part of the building for the uh, temporary post office and they did some electrical work there at that time so that kind of that was done um i had an inspector go through with me and said that he didn't see where any of the electrical needed to be changed mm -hmm. um i so would think that we would need to have some more information um yeah. Whitney, before we proceed, um, for site plan review, as far as like a plan, knowing parking is correctly laid out with handicapped spaces, there's adequate space, I can tell just by looking at it. Yeah. But have those, you know, laid out when you are having the outdoor um, events, how often, and there may be something in the bylaw, I'd have to check on that because I'm also new to the town and I'd have to look to see how often you're going to be doing that if you're going to have anything that's going to stay outside for long periods of time, that's a whole different thing. Like if you're just gonna have like, um, you know, in the summer months, put things outside, that's that's an, that's another, we, we just need to talk through some things. Okay. Um, as, I mean, John will, it's up to John. Does that mean I have to come back for another review? I think we need it's, to have a, yeah. a more complete application. And so what, Keith, some of the, the um, notes from fire, notes from uh, right. the building commissioner. Sorry. Okay, so you need that prior to. Yes, please. So our normal, um, and I, I mentioned this to someone else earlier, our normal procedure on the planning board with these kind of projects is usually it comes to us, the information that you've shared would come to us, and then we set, then we say what's, all the we detail what's needed and then we set a date for a public hearing this public hearing date got set without any of us knowing anything about the project and so um in, instead of posting a new one we if we decide we could continue this hearing for next month during the next month we could get all those we could hear from the fire department the building inspector the other people necessary and then it could be a nice short uh meeting next month um okay and it, ha so, it has to be in another month, it can't be the end of this month. Um, so we, we try to be very cooperative with businesses. What's your what's your time frame? Well, I need to get 
well, my question to you then is, as long as these things, the parking, the fire, um, and so on and so forth, as long as those are taken care of, do you think that there would be a problem for me to be able to get a permit to operate there? We, we don't do permits. So the building inspector would work with you on a lot of those issues about getting a permit. We just do the site plan review. Like we look at how it, um, we mentioned the parking spaces, um, is the, the drainage, the lighting, oh I hear from neighbors, whether it's gonna be you know, any issues with them. No video. Um, well, I, we already did the letters. Is that what you mean? Well, you did the certified letters to a butters and that's yes. why that's why we're having the public hearing tonight. So tonight, before I before we finish, I'm gonna ask if there's any anybody from the public that has any okay. uh, anything to say. Okay. But I don't have I don't have letters from other town officials unless I missed anything, Jennifer. I don't know. Um, like I, um and Mary has oh wait, I'm sorry, somebody has their hand. Yeah, up. no, I did. Um okay. I okay. felt like um the question that you're asking is are you gonna run around and do all this stuff and then we're gonna say no. Correct. Okay. So our job is our job is to help you um, get to a point where you're uh, doing what you do. Like we're, our job is not to stand in your way. So okay. you know we're not going to give you the run around and then at the end of the day, no, that's not what okay. I'm because I'm in the midst of going through for my financing and yeah. I just don't want to get all of that started and then say, oh, well, wait a minute, you, you're you're shy a couple. Parts well, and I, I mean I don't need to talk over you, John, but I just keep hearing Adam Costa say that a million times over the last <laughs> bunch of meetings. So I felt like I'm an expert at what he's been saying. Well, I think it's a very good thing to say. Yeah. <laughs> I appreciate it. It is a good thing to say, and we, we're here to support you as, as much right. as we can. Good. Denise? Awesome. Thank yeah, you. John, I just had a question. Since it is a change of use, um, is there are there any, uh, is there anything different about handicapped accessibility and how things are set up? Or we have I mean, it, because it wouldn't be grandfathered in because there is a change of use. Right. We have, well, those are all, we, Dale, let me, that's all building inspector. That's okay, not okay. things that we necessarily look at um, as part of, okay. does it, you know, there are some kind of general things we can look mm -hmm. at, um, Okay. but that's not, that's not one. Yeah. When we set up our booths, we set up um, a three to four foot walkway so that handicapped, we get a lot of handicapped people, even in our Greenfield office mm -hmm. and shop. They can't go up and down the stairs. Um, right but they spend a lot of time on the main floor and we'll even send uh, clerks upstairs and downstairs taking pictures of the things that they may be interested in to help them out that way. Um, have, have all of you been in my shop? Yes, yes. no? Yes, good. Frequent um, flyer. I'm sorry? <laughs> I'm a frequent flyer. You're a frequent flyer. <laughs> good, good to see you. <laughs> um, okay, Jennifer had a question. Um, are you using the upstairs in the building for, for, um, an apartment No, for, uh, customers? Yes. You mean you, where are you talking about Greenfield or Deerfield? In Deerfield. Deerfield. No. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Actually, one of my, um, clerks is going to rent the apartment. And he, so he will be, we'll have somebody staying there 24 seven. That's kind of like a security system in addition to our security system, because it's, there is a large layout and we're going to have something wired so that if there is any disturbance, it will go right upstairs so that he will be notified quickly. So I would say it sounds like we're, you know, basically in favor of it, but we do want to double check some things before we would sign off on it. Um, and so one thing is getting it out to all the different town officials. Um, but at this time, since we did open the public hearing, I'd like to ask if there's any um, abutters or, or other uh, residents that would have anything to say. Um, Chris Harris, I have one question of clarification. Okay. Uh, is this site is this site being converted into a nonprofit? Not the whole thing. No. There is a section in the shop that is going to run as a nonprofit. The whole site is not. It's it's just 
a section of it. So from a real estate standpoint, it's still on the Deerfield taxpayers' role. Absolutely. Thank you. And just to be clear, that's not something that we actually look at in a site plan review, but it's a good question. So anything else? I move that we continue this. And I, the, the, um, Dale does bring up a good question. Um, I, I'm a little nervous that we have four public hearings tonight. If we continue them all till January 5th, we're going to be in trouble again. Um, so maybe this is a time before we finish this motion, the planning board members to discuss among ourselves, um, did we want to add a meeting at some point? Oh, you mean like continue it to a, a date in December? Yeah, which then becomes problematic because like normally we would say, well, maybe at the end of December we could squeeze in a meeting, but I don't think we want to volunteer to do that. Uh, so, um, Not going anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> if you promise it's short, I don't mind, frankly. Um, if it makes another night shorter. Uh, That's what I'd rather what sort of make two short ones than one. That's fine um, with me. It would put you a bit, um, Jay, on a fast track to get these. Dale. Dale. Um, Dale, sorry. Dale, yeah, I'm Dale. Okay. He's Jay. 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 Sorry, Jay. Jay. Dale. Can I ask a question? <laughs> yes. Yep. Um, for the pl for the apartment, is that an existing apartment? Is there going to be any other per permitting that you're going to need for that? That it's an existing apartment. Okay. And there's um, the wasn't it the building building inspector went through it with us, um, and he didn't say anything and about anything needed for it. Um, so, and, and John, you had mentioned getting in touch with the other boards. I applied to all the other boards. Not so much so the boards, I, but- I, the, Is that what you other, were talking about? I was talking about the other town officials, uh, the police, the fire, the- um, Oh, DPW, okay. Yeah, the other- Oh, okay. Departments. Okay. Yeah. Okay, great. The, the special permit, once you find out what that is, that might be the zoning board you would need to go to, not- we, we, we take care of some special permits, but the zoning board does most of them. Okay. And I'm, I'm not, I can't think off the top of my head what it is that you. you so know, who you is know. the person that actually say, no, that that has to be a special permit? Jennifer? So, so basically the building commissioner looks at your application and then he determines with my insight on it um, a little bit, depending on what board it goes to. I do recall him making reference to the size of the building and the amount that you're going to be used. You can't just say, I'm not going to use 3,000 square feet. I'm going to use only 1,000 square feet of the building. Um, I'm not 100%. That's why I want to check with him. I thought that he made a comment for tonight's meeting. Um, we're all a bit disheveled because we, we were all sent home because of a potential COVID interaction that we're not still sure of. Um, mm. So it's we're not all we're all working remotely so i apologize for that i thought it was something that um was given out but i do recall that there's something to do with square footage of that building and this of the site that that triggers a process okay so in reality the whole thing is going to be used so there, it's not going to be a part of it even the nonprofit is renting a section of it to whitney hill at the gables okay so, so then then I, I do believe that it triggers something. Um, Max's hands raised, so he, maybe he has to. Go ahead, Max. Well, if you just go to the use tables. Yep. Um, 179-5, third one down, the retail use, 4,000 to 30,000 square feet. That's what I think we're looking at, yeah. And then there's note four, five, and six. And I think, is this C1 or C2? I don't have the application. See, these are the things that maybe didn't come across. And um, but it's in C2. 
because you're saying this is a 16,000 square foot building and if it's in C1, then it's note six. I think I'll leave that would be C2. I have the zone. Yeah, I haven't seen the application. Well, it doesn't say on the application. That's the thing. The application is quite sparse to tell you the truth. Yeah. I think there is a guideline of the application that has the breakdown of one moment. You know, I have it here. But I, anyways, that's where the, the special permits coming from. And then there's the, the notes and that's, I think that's where the building commissioners talking about the size of the building because it's, it's a, uh, I think something it's about fifteen thousand square feet in a C one. So. I th I want to say it's C two. It's C two. Um, I've I have the uh, zoning okay. map in front of me. Yeah, it yep. is C two. It, it is C two. So okay, so you can ignore that. Ignore what? I'm sorry. Um, note six on the use table. But four doesn't apply, it looks like, either, does it? Uh, it's, it's expansion. And there's no expansions being done. So, yeah, you get a north. So it's just no five. So the outdoor storage sales or display associated with any retail use requires site plan review. Outdoor right, storage. Just, or outdoor. Sales. Displays. Sales or display. Yeah. Oh, I, if I'm just for the applicant to see where these questions are coming from. Yeah. So, Dale, there's a use chart in our zoning bylaw, and that's yeah. what they're reading right now. So then they have the numbers. So they're just saying that. Correct. You know, and even if we could, I don't know if you, if this is part of the application, but a plan showing um, the area in which you will use it in the park yeah. and. Um, and then, you know, what certain things that they look at is where's the parking going to be? Where is your merchandise going to be? Is there yeah. extra lighting? What's your hours? You know, that type of thing. Deliveries. Um, yeah. That's all part of the site plan review. Okay. So I would uh, recommend that we'll continue it and then you can ask um, Jennifer, are you around this week? You could work with her a little bit. Yep. Yeah, I'm actually going to, it's my turn in the office tomorrow. I'm all excited. So um, I get to go <laughs> and not work remotely. Right. Um, so if you want to give me a call, I'll be in at 8 a.m. Okay. And, all um, right. Well, I'll try to get stuff together to send to you. Sure. Um, but the, you know, trying to get it accomplished as soon as possible would be in my best for the right. financing's best interest. I could also set up a Zoom meeting so we can talk to each other like this and go that through. That would be perfect. You know, and that way it's it's kind of easier for me to then show you a document yep. that I need and then yep. go through that. So, and I'll try to do that also with um, the building commissioner with Bob and um, it's much easier when you can look at somebody. So. Awesome. Okay. So All it right. sounds like this might take more than two weeks though. So let's, uh, I, I think let's continue this to Jan the four weeks, which is the first Monday in January and see how that goes. Is that? Okay. Uh, sound reasonable? Wait, All right. Did so, you say um, first Monday in January? Yep. Okay. Denise, you, oh no, you don't, my hand was there. All right. So Rachel, were you making a motion? Well, muted. Oh, you're muted. You want to look at December? No. You think it will take longer than three weeks? Yeah, I'd ha I hate to put it in two weeks and not be ready. So it's, I think, and then we don't want to- I can it. be ready in two weeks. But but the people you have to get information and things from, I'm not sure. Well- Can I, can I try and then go from there? <laughs> any board members, do you want to meet in uh, 21st? Uh, sure. How about oh. the 28th? 28th would work better for me because I have a personnel board on the 21st. Oh, okay. Is that yeah. all right with you, John? Or yeah, I mean, like in a normal world, I, that week is usually yeah. very difficult, but are yeah. all the planning board members agreeing that they'll be around? All right. I am going skiing. I won't Who? be here. 
Good you for won't you. be here. <laughs> but 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 they do have Zoom from. <laughs> they do. Yeah, okay, get on. <laughs> Boy, you people. Um, <laughs> It'll be short. <laughs> okay, fine. All right, fine. It's my. <laughs> All right, so you want to make that motion, Rachel? Yes, so I move that we continue this um, uh, hearing. Public, the, public hearing. Public hearing um, to the 28th of December. At, at 7 o'clock? I would love to go earlier. <laughs> yeah, for really a special one, we can do 6. 6 or o'clock would be great, because okay. it's going to be short, and then we're done. Perfect. Awesome. And Jennifer, right. I'll talk to you. Do, do we I have, have a second? Direct line? Wait, do we have a second? I second that. Any seconds? Please, any please. discussion? All those in favor? Uh, uh oh, people aye. have moved around on my screen, but Dennis. <laughs> Denise Mason, aye. Yes. Rachel. Rachel Blaine, aye. Anna Lee. Anna Lee Wolf Cool, aye. Anne Mary. Anne Mary Cloutier, aye. Max. Max Aintees, aye. John Waite, aye. Uh, good. All right. So we'll see okay. you on the 20. Eighth at six, and hopefully we'll have lots of other all that details filled in. Thank you. Extension one zero four. Perfect. Great. Thank you all very much. And I should just say, Dale and Jay, thank you. That building obviously has been empty for a while. It's exciting to think of it as being being utilized in a good way. So thank you. There's a lot of people that are very excited about it. Yeah. yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Merry Thanks, Christmas if I don't see you. <laughs> okay. Thank you. All right, back to the agenda. All right, I'd like to open another public hearing, a site plan review for 253 Greenfield Road from aromatic fillers to utilize the existing building as a new client showroom, design and development of new products, testing and light manufacturing of essential products, which include candles, weed diffusers, hand soaps and sanitizers. And we also received site plan information from them and, and a report from SVE. So let me ask who is, um, do we have uh, the applicants uh, with us tonight? Yeah. Uh, Christy Bode and I'm the attorney for the applicant. The applicant is Todd Green and Tony, I can't pronounce your right, last name correctly. <laughs> uh, Tony Wonseski with SVE. Wonseski is, is, is here for yes. SVE and since Around Right. Around here, he just goes by Tony. It's good. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Since he prepared the application, I, I think we'll let him take the lead if that's okay. And Todd, you're the uh, the business owner. Is that it? Or right. yes, thank you. Yeah, Todd's the right. CEO. Um, John, do you have or does Jennifer have access to the site plan that you can bring up on the on the on the site? We do. Let's. Uh... I can do it. Can't I? It's a very simple site plan. This is very similar to what you are the previous hearing. So it's quite exciting for the five and 10 corridor. Yeah, this is right across the street. So. Yeah. yeah. This is um, map 122, lot four, and it's a 3.7 acre parcel. Um, that was formerly the auto dealership. Um, they've since left and um, Todd and his business are looking to lease that um, property at uh, 253 Greenfield Road. Uh, the gross floor here is about 15,816 square feet off the assessors. Um, this um, is in the commercial zone two, C2. And um, a good portion of the site that was not developed is um, that's undeveloped and left natural is wetland resources. Um, this project um, is not going to require any site development. I, I will say there's a couple minor things, and when we get the site plan up, I'll, I'll show you what, what Todd is proposing. But um, so I have the just to, do you have it or I can pull it up? I just got it off the website, so let's see. Uh, right. Although I got so many other things on my screen, I know you're going to see it's other a, things. It's a pretty large file. Yeah, so it's a very simple site plan. Oh, good. Christy, thank yeah. you. Yeah, this is perfect. Um, so you'll see here, it's, it's an aerial and it really, um, you know, because we're not doing any site improvements, um, we didn't actually go back and survey the property. So we pulled the um, aerial um, from the mass GIS 
Um, and we had some property information and deed information. The owner of the property is Mr. Michael Bedard and he had it surveyed years ago by Robert Rose Associates and also um, had um, a map uh, to the north, um, which we were able to piece this together. And of course you have the new um, storage uh, development directly to the south. So um, I'll, I'll let Todd talk a little bit about the business um, and how it's gonna operate, but it's, we anticipate that there'll only be about 12 to 15 employees in the site and um, the, um, it'll, um, it'll receive probably one or two 26 foot box trucks. It'll be a shuttle delivery between their main operations in Greenfield on Haywood Street. Um, this is a satellite operation here. And um, we will have our dumpsters. We have a, a recyclable and also a trash dumpsters. Those will be located in the back behind the building. So they'll be screened from the public right away. Um, we have uh, uh, all the services, gas, electric to the site, uh, water service from South Deerfield Water District. There's an on-site septic system here and that's on the north side of the building in the lawn area, um, right in that area. And that's fairly new. I, I, I um, talked to Mr. Kalaszewski about that and uh, he was able to give me a copy of that plan so we could plot it and show the location of that. So, I mean, as a car dealership, there was uh, the, the amount of traffic from there would be significantly more than um, 15 employees and a couple of truck uh, delivery, shuttle deliveries between Greenfield and here. So. Um, don't anticipate any, um, any issues with um, uh, any traffic here. Uh, we reached out to MassDOT and I believe Christy can probably um, answer a question on this, but uh, they were not uh, concerned about, um, you know, the change in use and the reduction in um, um, uh, traffic. We're not nope. planning any new lighting. Um, the existing lighting on the site will be utilized. And that's the reason I believe that Todd is looking to put a gate in right at the south side of the building um, over, it's a, just gonna be a swing gate. You'll see it right there, just because in the evening it does get pretty dark. You have offset lighting from the storage areas, um, but to prevent anybody from driving behind the building he's gonna put up a, a, just a, a short fence and a gate there. The other thing that we talked about, and this is more or less a striping operation on the front of the building, you'll notice in our application that at certain times of the year, he'll have three to four new customers come to the facility where they have innovation and discussions about the products. And so we're putting in a couple of uh, striping and signing a couple of ADA spaces next to that existing ramp. Um, so if you look at the pictures, it was where the sob portion was and there's a ramp that gets you right into that area and that's where Todd will be having his um, conference room and innovation area, I believe. And so those are really the two improvements. Operating hours, um, as we know it, I think believe it's seven to four or seven to five um, and that's Monday through Friday. But in the, you know, the holiday season, the fall time, sometimes they'll have um, um, occasional Saturday shifts to fill orders and so forth. But um, really, uh, you know, it's just nice to have somebody moving into that vacant building. There's no real, uh, you know, there's no improvements uh, to speak of. So there's, you know, there's no drainage. Drainage would be exempt on this site plan approval. And we're here because of section 5411 of the code and that requires uh, site plan review and approval for change in use. We will be going Thursday before the ZBA for the same thing as a change in use. Um, and we have, because of the, um, uh, uh, testing and research, it probably qualify under a, a, a lab kind of, you know, research. So that triggers a special permit here. Otherwise, the manufacturing, I believe, is all by right, but um, we'll be before the ZBA this Thursday. And that's my short presentation um, because there's not a lot of site work. So there wasn't much for me to, to do on this. So hopefully, um, you know, Todd, if you want to jump in and talk a little bit more about the business, that would be terrific. And um, thank you all for hearing me out. Tony, could I just ask what, what zone are we in here? Uh, we're in the commercial C2 zone. C2. Two. two, yeah. So that's where um, I'm just looking. You're right. If it's manufacturing processing, yeah. it's either by right or certain yeah. kinds do require a special permit. But yeah, 
I mean, we meet the performance standards and all of that, but it still mm -hmm. triggers that. And it's better to go before them anyways and make sure that they're satisfied and everything's, mm -hmm. everything's fine. Good, thanks, Tony. Thank you. Todd? Uh, good evening. Um, what I can tell you about uh, myself and the business, I have been in the candle business for 30 years. I started in Deerfield Yankee Candle. I worked for about uh, six other employers across the country ended up back in Massachusetts. Um, I started this contract manufacturing business in um, Greenfield. Um, we currently occupy three buildings in Greenfield. Um, our main headquarters here is a 40,000 square foot building where we do mass production of candle product and other scented product. Um, and then I have two other buildings that I lease in Greenfield uh, that are small. One is on Chapman Street and one is on Wells. The hope is that we would consolidate those two uh, smaller facilities into the Deerfield facility. Um, and what the, the beautiful thing about this location is my building in Greenfield is very ugly. It's a hundred year old GTD building that we repurposed. It has no showroom. It has no real good conference room. Um, and this building, when I saw it for um, lease, I thought of a great opportunity it, it affords us because um, it's very easy to get to. It's on Route 5. It's not in a neighborhood. It has all these different spaces inside that building. So, for example, um, what Tony said is uh, we will have guests come. So because we don't sell to the public, there'll be no retail um, there'll be no retail uh, sales. There'll be no customers driving in to buy stuff or anything like that. The, the customers that come are either new clients or existing clients, and they will come for a visit. We'll talk about uh, new products will we'll show what we're doing or or help them decide what they want to um, what type of uh, product they want to evolve or, or bring to market and so what happens what's great about this building is uh, the south side which is the Volvo dealer uh, the Volvo showroom side it's a very nice clean space for us to do things like um, filling uh, reed diffusers or hand soaps and things like that. It's very clean room, stainless steel tables that, that has a white table floor, a white tile floor. I have tinted all the windows so that you don't see in, you don't see out. It's not, uh, uh, um, what do you call it, distracting to any of the motorists or anything like that. Um, the Saab showroom, which is the north side, that is the side that we plan to have visitors because of the it's easy access into that spot um there it's a nice small space with its own private bathroom off of that showroom we have a plan to put a conference room there or a conference table so we would meet all the clients there and be able to show them all of the things that we can do when you go back into the automotive uh, repair place the the shop for uh for all intents and purposes there's a place where the owner has taken out all the lifts so it's pretty much wide open and we um there is the ability to have 100 pallet spaces in the first section um which it allows us to have materials there um in transit whether we're using them or they're going to greenfield or coming to deerfield to be finished up and then the back uh portion of that repair shop is a nice level concrete floor and that's where we would um do any other assembly or light manufacturing there um i anticipate about a dozen employees uh working there in that facility uh, on a daily basis. Tony talked about the, the days and times. Um, what I can tell you about our business, th even though I've been in it for 30 years, we've been in this business for about six. Um, uh, it has been a successful business um, and uh, we continue to um, grow. And I see this as a, as a nice piece where I can have folks from anywhere in the country come visit us. Um, and kind of see a little snapshot of everything we do versus coming to Greenfield where it's just a, an ugly concrete building with stuff everywhere. You know, um, there's not, uh, not, a good, uh, not a good formal place to meet. So um, I don't know if there's more questions, if I haven't covered it enough, if there's other things I can explain. So um, you're consolidating two, posi two positions, two locations, mm -hmm. um, but will the main offices still be in Greenfield on Haywood or are you going yeah. to? 
Yes, so everything's gonna, that's in Greenfield at Haywood Street stays. The two other locations, if you're familiar with Greenfield, uh, is the old Lefty's Brewery on Well Street. That's about 20, uh, about 6,000 square feet. And then there's an old telephone garage uh, that's on Chapman that was owned, it's owned by Jim Elwell. Um, it's basically cold storage, there's not heat, there's, n there's nothing there but electricity. So that's about combined, it's about 15,000 square feet, but it isn't as usable. Like I cannot have staff work at Chapman Street. There's no bathrooms, there's no heat. Um, and there's some other problems with that building. Uh, so this will allow us to uh, be more productive, be in one location, and we have the benefit of the beautiful showroom space for meeting with clients. It's not an embarrassing um, location or in a, actually in where we are in Haywood Street, it's a very tight neighborhood and we don't, we have about 40 parking spaces. There's not a ton of extra parking. Thank you, anybody else? So I've been going through the application as you, as you spoke and it all uh, looks good. You've, I don't have the stamp that shows you paid your fees, but I think it probably have, is one somewhere along the way. Yeah, I think we paid um, 152 times. <laughs> um, and it's, yeah, as Tony said, it's really just a change of use since nothing else is, uh, it's changing. I appreciate the, uh, appreciate whoever did the application. You've put a lot of our, all the site plan review notes that we would normally put in a decision. You've already filled it out for us. So appreciate that. Tony so knows as well. He yeah. knows he has to do half the work, if not more than half the work. So this is a this is a public hearing. So I'd like uh, to see if there's anybody in the public that has any comments or questions. Please raise your hand or announce yourself. Uh, this is Chris Harris. I'm on audio only. Yep. Um, you know, since I came back from California, um, I always like look into things like this, and um, I think Todd Green and his business is flourishing and doing great things. And I think he's uh, dealt with all the details on this uh, transition and this expansion into South Deerfield. And I think we should welcome this opportunity. It's a great use of the property and the homework has been done. Thank you, Chris. Anybody else? Lily. Hi, I just want to say this. Sounds Can you uh, identify yourself, please? Oh, I'm sorry. Lily Dwight, South Mill River Road. This sounds fantastic. And it sounds so in keeping with how we want our town to grow. And um, I got to say this evening so far has been just wonderful to hear what's happening. So that's me. Any, thank you, Lily. Anybody else? Yes, Rini Clancy. Hi, Rini. Go ahead. I'm trying to start video. There. Oh, hello. Hello. Yeah, um, I also would agree with Lily that this has been wonderful proceedings. There is no antagonism. There's no us against them. And I really appreciate it. And I think I agree it would be a wonderful use of that building. And let's keep Deerfield growing economically. Thank you very much. Thanks. Wow, we're three for three, Todd. We got I don't know if we don't push our luck here, but uh, anybody else? I can answer. Hi. Yep, oh, go ahead. Yeah, hi. This is Sonam Lama, and okay. I'm right next door. And uh, I'm glad uh, that a, a very nice business coming and became almost uh, pretty lonely now, but uh, <laughs> I'm really happy that you uh, people coming. Thank you. You're welcome. It's me. Good. Thanks, Sonam. You've done a good job on your property, so uh, I hope uh, this one <laughs> Thank stays you. Up with you. And I think the neighbor to the south is here. I don't know if Douglas is going to say anything or. Uh, yeah. All right. Any other comments? So, um, so planning board. This is a case where. Well, actually, Jennifer, can we, are you, uh, are you still with us? Oh, yes. 
So this this appears more complete than the, the last one. And um, that's because of my friend Christy here. She knows how <laughs> I operate. <laughs> well, Todd, it doesn't hurt to have a Christy and Tony who are known quantities to us to right. help yes, figure sure. things. Um, so no, so, it, was, it was a nice complete application. I appreciate it. Come back with a, you know, you know how much I like my complete applications, Chris. Yes, we all yes, do. Yes, I and do. I remember from so, Amherst. <laughs> I'm almost surprised. That's why I'm like questioning, are we missing something? So I'm, that's why I wanted to check in. <laughs> no, it's you. good. She called, we talked, I suggested a few things and she had it done and she came back with a complete application. So I really appreciate that. She talked to the building commissioner and um, yeah. <laughs> And are there any special permits or anything they have to go for? Or? Well, we have to get a special permit. Yeah, that that CBA is going to hear us on Thursday. So, and that's change of use or is a specific reason? I can't remember. <laughs> I think it's the manufacturing. Yeah. yeah, I know, but one type of manufacturing. And change of use. Change of use and manufacturing in the C two. Okay. Yeah. Well, if you can meet this performance standards, then it's by right. If you cannot, then it's a special permit. I think that's what Tony was talking about. Is so, but anyway. Uh, yeah, but I think yeah. it's this laboratory. I think it's the innovation part that triggers that as, oh, as okay. one of the issues. If you go down a little far, farther, it's, it's, it requires a special permit, I believe. So right. um, yeah, so we'll, um, we'll go do that on Thursday and hopefully get approval. And then um, Todd's off um, getting and it's a, um, to occupy. You know, we, we know it's a state road and you're, you're using the same driveway, all the rest of that. So there's no issues. Yeah, curb yeah, cuts. I, curb cuts I, called, the uh, I called uh, Mass Highway and I need to send them a letter, but basically it's a, it's a there's no need for a road cut permit or anything because we're not doing anything to the entranceway at all, so. And, you know, we do have uh, stormwater issues in town. You do not, it looks like you don't need to do that permit, but I, there is a lot of pavement there. If you're not going to use it, you know, someday maybe you'll plant trees there or something, but. Um, we will definitely beautify it. <laughs> like it's already in progress, you know, with like just getting it, uh, the paint job and having the the windows tinted. We're, like Tony said, we're going to put in the gate to just keep bad people from going out back because whenever you have that kind of space, that's that can happen. Um, but we'll continue to, yeah, improve it. I mean, even stuff like at this time of the year, we're the type of folks that would want to put up decorations and stuff, you know, make it look nicer. So, right. and the fence isn't out front at all; it's just in the back. Is that what you're saying? It's on the back. It's on the south side driveway. South side driveway to prevent um, vehicles from getting behind the building off hours. So, because um, you have full access back there right now, you know, with an auto dealership, there it's different. They're they're yeah. they're late and there's lights everywhere and you know you but you know. His yeah. operation when he leaves at four or five, there's right. nobody there. Somebody could pull behind the building in the evening. So it's just right. a straight length of fence, and I think it's a twenty foot swing gate just to allow, um, you know, deliveries and and dumpsters to get the you know uh, trucks to get back to the dumpsters. Uh, what it's far far enough off the road that it's not a uh, yeah. Nobody's going to notice. So much. No, 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 no. What I can also add is that we have it spec'd out to match. The fencing at the storage area, solid black chain link, so it'll it will look uh, continuous. It'll look uniform with the neighbor. That's nice. The, uh, okay. There, there always will be a. It will be a locked gate, so okay. is, you'll have the fire department look at that too. Right. Well. For sure. Yeah. I'm, we're 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 certainly uh, because of our history. I'm I'm I know uh, Bill and some of the other folks there, so we can make sure they have a key or whatever they need. Yeah, or a lockbox outside for sure. So um, again, this is this is sort of fast tracked. Usually we review it and then we start planning for a um, to write up a decision. But as I said, you've kind of helped us write up our decision. So I kind of feel like fairly comfortable that we could make a vote tonight and um, and write up a decision within the next you know few days if planning board members are comfortable with that. Any any other questions or comments, planning board members? It would be nice to have some trees when you get around to it. <laughs> Max, I can't see you. Are you, uh, any questions? Looks like I, was just, I was just reading through uh, 4,900 and the performance standard. Yeah, looks pretty good, huh? 
and in the application the, they they sent us they included all those responses yeah. so yeah. the water district and the fire flow is adequate for the new the, re, the different use oh tony you're muted <laughs> I mean, we'll go through building building department review on that, Max, and and double check with them. Um, but I know we have service to the to the building, and um, I'm just not an architect, so I don't know what the you know the fire requirements would be there. But um, that's all South Deerfield Water District there. Yeah, it's just you know the dealership had flush toilets, and I don't know if you what size the service is to the building. That's all. It's something. Something to bring up. Yeah, we'll we'll work with them on on that and and um, building part. Now I know I made submittals. I mean, you you have to submit. Um, I think nine extra copies of the application. Um, we did submit to the fire department, the police department, all the other departments, and I even submitted to the water district, although it's not required. Um, I did the did Jennifer. Did you get any comments back from those departments that had any? Thing that couldn't be taken care of through a building department? I haven't, but that doesn't mean that Sue in the building department, sometimes it doesn't get funneled to the select board office where I'm at. Okay. Yeah. Um, and but I can check on that. Um, I have a question about is there a smell? Is there any odor? I'll, I'll let Todd answer that. This is a different kind of um, um, operation here. Yeah, so it, we do make scented products, but it, we do, um, it's not traditionally what you might be used to historically. <laughs> uh, everybody has their way. I'm not criticizing um, the, the, the neighbors, I guess you can call. Uh, we're really not competitors to them. Um, we have worked together on different things, but we use, uh, so when we're doing like, um, any kind of any of the personal care like hand soaps or sanitizers or even reed diffusers that is i call it juice juice is in a drum and it goes into a machine and it's fed right into a bottle the bottle gets corked and then it's it's uh, shrink wrapped or uh, and goes on any of uh, the candle process that we do is different than um traditional or what has been done in uh locally before we use um, um mix on the fly equipment called um, they're actually called cougar machines and they keep the ingredients separate. So the ingredients don't meet until they are at the nozzle where they dispense. So there's about 15 minutes of time when uh, there's liquid um, wax that has fragrance in it before it skims over. So they, um, the impact that you uh, emit is less. So when you're making um, the idea, the theory is that the person, the end consumer gets the most potent thing because it hasn't churned off in a vat for several hours and then and then emitting everywhere else instead of going where that where you want it to go which is where the customer uses it um the all the other piece i'd say is that there's um the size and the constraints it's not a we in greenfield it's um you know twenty thousand candles a day um that facility can't do that it's more for um um, like prototyping, you know, 300, 600 pieces a day of, of um, items so that um, it's usually like small batch test first run of somebody's stuff before it goes into mass production. It's what's done at Well Street. Um, does that answer your question? Yes, thank you. Yes. Answers the question in a little bit of a free advertisement at the same time. So that's good. <laughs> Do we have any... Um, Board member want to make a, a motion on this? And I, I actually, um, I would put in the motion that what, what um, Tony and Jennifer just talked about is we, we would want on condition that all the town officials uh, have no objections to it because we haven't seen that and that is part of the site plan review requirement. So. so I make, oh, I was gonna say I make a motion to Oh, I'm sorry. Denise? No, I was going to make a motion to accept the plan pending on pending upon the approval of the other um, individuals or that have to approve. Boards it. and offices. So yes, the offices within the town right. administration and at the ZBA. Right. I second it, her motion. <laughs> Any discussion? Thank you, Rachel. 
All those in favor, I'll go around. Um, oh, everybody's moved all over again. Denise. <laughs> Denise Mason, yes. And I do appreciate how streamlined this was. Rachel. Rachel Blaine, aye. Annalee. Annalee Wolfcool, aye. And Mary. And Mary Collier, yes. Max. Max Antis, yes. John Wheat, yes. So that's 600, zero, zero, unanimous approval of the site plan, as long as town officials agree. Excellent. Thank thanks very much. Thanks. Uh, welcome to Deerfield, Todd and company. And thanks for the good work, Christy and Tony and everybody. Thank you. Merry Christmas, everyone. Thank you. Happy holidays. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Wow. Just over an hour, we've done three public hearings. Boy. Whoa. <laughs> Mind-numbing efficiency. You're going to get a medal soon, huh? I'll tell you. <laughs> Oh, I lost my John. <laughs> Let me come back to the agenda here. We're out there. Mm. Public hearing number four formula based business bylaw amendment and formula based definitions proposed by Deerfield for responsible development. Oh, I actually have a, uh, I should do the little longer one here. Um, hold on, where to go? Where to go? All right. Uh, notice is hereby given that the Deerfield Planning Board will hold a public hearing pursuant to MGL Chapter 40A, Section 5 on Monday, December 7th for the proposed formula-based business bylaw and formula-based business definitions. Meetings held <coughs> remotely. Oh, okay. That, that's, that's it. So we have had um, some preliminary discussions about this at the Planning Board and I think it was two or three months ago, we put it, uh, we knew we had other business, so we put it on the December meeting. So I appreciate people's patience that we had other public hearings tonight, but we can give some good time to this proposed bylaw and it was proposed by um, Deerfield for Responsible Development. And I know there's a, there's a few of them here tonight that wanna present to us. And since we're on uh, sort of the normal Zoom, not a webinar, I think you all have access to unmute yourselves. Um, so I know Debbie, Tolly, and Lily are, are gonna do a little tag team. And I think you can also uh, get on this share screen. Let us know if you can't. Wonderful, um, thank you, John. So please welcome and we look forward to hearing about it. Great. Um, well, good evening, everyone, um, board members. Just wanna thank you all. Um, very much for all the time you take with the meetings and reading all of the material. Uh, we know a lot goes into it and we definitely um, appreciate that. And given that um, we've already can had- you just, Tolly, can you just say your full name, please? Oh yes, of course. Um, Tolly Stark, Keats Road. And um, I'm also chair for Deerfield for Responsible Development. And given that we've had some uh, preliminary discussions on this, I was just gonna give a, a brief introduction and then um, we'll do some screen sharing if that's okay. Yep. Um, <clears throat> Lily wants to say something. I just want to know, Tali, did you want me to bring up the um, slideshow while you're speaking or not after? You no, speak? I think we should do it after. Okay, no, you got it. Yeah. Thank you, Lily. And I'm actually. I'm looking at notes on my screen, so I won't see if someone raises their hand, so I apologize for that. <laughs> Anyhow, um, we just really appreciate the opportunity to discuss this proposed amendment to Deerfield's already existing bylaws to include a proper definition for a formula-based business. Uh, this bylaw amendment would be an important tool for the future of Deerfield. Um, there's a favorite quote that I really like by um, Richard Buckminster Fuller. He's a renowned architect, designer, inventor, and futurist. Um, and he said that the best way to predict the future is to design it. And so we see this as being a way to help design uh, the future development of Deerfield. This bylaw will help us design and create a clear path for formula-based businesses to enter Deerfield. Providing formula-based businesses with a clear definition and expectation to work from 
when designing their site plan, which will in turn save the planning board time, money, and resources by not having to start the process of a site plan review with only vague and ambiguous language that leaves Deerfield vulnerable and open to misinterpretations of our bylaws, lacking any real guidance for a formula-based business to follow. Um, furthermore, this would save formula-based businesses, which seem to be increasingly frustrated um, from not fully knowing or understanding the character of Deerfield and the expectation of our zoning bylaws. It would save them time, money, and resources by coming to the town's planning authority prepared with complete applications to meet and to be compliant with such a bylaw. So in addition, it would also encourage formula-based businesses to also perhaps occupy existing vacant storefronts or buildings, which it seems like we'll have less and less of in Deerfield, which is great. <laughs> um, so Deerfield has a master plan and that plan um, opens by stating, and quote from the master plan, a master plan is a long range plan that guides the development in a town towards a vision of what residents would like the future to be. It is a comprehensive document that looks at all aspects of a community, including farmland, open spaces, natural resources, community facilities and services, housing, historic and scenic resources, transportation resources, economic development, land use, and zoning. Now, our master plan was diligently worked on and co-created with the residents of Deerfield, expert planners, multiple committees, and the Franklin Regional Council of Government's planning department. Our master plan is the future that we would like to create and how we would like our town to develop. This bylaw amendment will give the town one of the tools that it needs to effectively fortify our master plan. Now, a master plan is only as useful as it can be implemented. So this amendment will shape how formula businesses enter Deerfield. Our community is unique in its character. It has a rich history, which is currently reflected in the businesses and attractions here. The amendments will preserve the historic Deerfield corridor of Route 5 and 10, while fostering important economic growth that will attract rather than detract or deter businesses, such as the Treehouse Brewery, which is currently moving to Deerfield, as I know that most of you know. Um, it would continue to bring in tourism dollars as <clears throat> Deerfield is not you know, just anywhere America, making our town a much more appealing tourist destination, which has a significant impact on our retail and our food service economy. So as I mentioned, Treehouse Brewery it's a successful local business that has chosen to expand to Deerfield as opposed to another town. And if that's, you know, there's other towns that are centrally located that could have been wonderful locations for them, but they chose Deerfield for a reason. Um, Treehouse Brewery has published their excitement to be in Deerfield saying, quote, within mere minutes of Treehouse Western Massachusetts is the five college region, downtown Northampton, Mount Sugarloaf State Reservation, the Butterfly Conservatory, historic Deerfield, Yankee Candle flagship store, the Deerfield River, the Bridge of Flowers, and so much more. We will be put, <laughs> putting together a map of nearby attractions in Deerfield and beyond, unquote. So they're citing all the unique businesses and attractions that make Deerfield extraordinary rather than just ordinary. And our select board has also identified the crucial importance of attracting a local business like Treehouse to Deerfield. Um, a quote from an article in the Greenfield Recorder from one of Deerfield's select board members says, quote, because they, referring to Treehouse, are a non-distributing brewery and their beer can only be bought on site, they will bring much needed synergy to the local, the existing local breweries, especially in these pandemic times, and be an economic multiplier for businesses in Deerfield, as well as the county, end quote. Also noting that the brewery will bring jobs to town and quote, stabilize Deerfield's tax base after the closing of Channing B. This is truly a long-term boost to the local economy and a real win for all, end quote. So the proposed bylaw amendments would continue to allow Deerfield to compete and attract sustainable community invested businesses like Treehouse Brewery, 
like the other two applicants that were just before all of you at the planning board. It would align Deerfield's development with its master plan. It'll allow real tools for our local boards to use and to define a clear path for formula-based businesses to be a part of the Deerfield community. But most of all, I mean, it would embody the development that we know, love, and desire for our beautiful little town here. Um, I think Treehouse really put it best when they stated, with over 50 acres of beautifully maintained lawn and virgin wooded areas, our campus is the ideal playground for families and those looking to escape for an afternoon and enjoy a peaceful environment paired with tasty beverages of all types. So Deerfield really needs adequate tools to achieve development guided by our master plan and to continue to attract sustainable businesses. And so Deerfield for Responsible Development believes that this bylaw amendment <clears throat> is an appropriate and much needed start. Um, we fully support these additions to our bylaw. And um, just noticing with a little comparing and contrasting that um, seeing how the applicants that you all have just dealt with that are local business owners, community members, people that are invested in this area locally, um, it's a very different process to witness than for a formula-based business. That's not to try and demonize formula-based businesses, but it's just to point out that they come in with a certain idea that they're doing from across the country or across the world. And that is not necessarily what's going to fit for Deerfield, but they don't have to abide by anything and they don't have to continue to come back and ask for things when there's nothing written in there for them to do so. So this gives them a clear path and a very clear understanding of how they would need to come into Deerfield. And that's why we fully support this and um, certainly hope that the planning board would support it as well. Now I rambled on long enough and I know it's getting late. <laughs> so I'm gonna turn it over to uh, my colleagues, Debbie Shriver and Lily Dwight, both of whom directly worked on Deerfield town bylaws in the past um, to share with the board some photos um, and what could be achieved with this bylaw. And then of course, um, we would love to answer any specific questions that the board has. Thank you. Good evening, I'm Debbie Shriver, Pocumtuck Drive. Uh, we do have some photos to show you to, if we could do, if Lily could do the split screen, we wanted to show you some of the photos of what, what could be uh, under the terms of something like this bylaw. So, as, Lee, as uh, Tolly was pointing out, we, have, we, can, we can have something more harmonious. This is the Dunkin' Donuts in Haydenville. And um, you could see the contrast. If you pop back there, Lily, thank you. You can see the difference in the signage, the facade of the building, a much more attractive presence than you can go to the more standard, to the more standard look, which um, is what they would prefer to do uh, quite often, where there isn't any, any um, where, where no one is asking them to do anything differently. You can go on again. Lily. So here is, you can almost not see it, but it is a McDonald's and you can see a sign with the golden arches, but it's tucked into this brick building. Uh, this is, I believe in Manchester, Vermont. If I remember. Um, and that's a little different from what we more typically might see. Uh, let's go on. Here we have actually a Walmart sketch. And Lily, you'll have to tell me where this is if you know the location. And you're muted. There Sorry. You yeah. Um, I I'm not sure. One of these is in Rutland, Mass. One of these examples. Um, it's not the Walmart. There's a, a, a Dunkin' Donuts in in Rutland, Mass. But this okay. looks like it's an artist's rendering. It, it, it's of, a, it was a proposal from some community that from I, one community for the locating a Walmart in a looks like in a shopping mall instead of <laughs> what we might more often more typically see. What's our next slide? Oh, then we're getting on to the thing. So let me walk you briefly through the draft definition articles, um, which define the 
uh, the formula-based business. And I'll just read from the initial piece of it before I continue the explanation. So a formula-based business is a kind of a retail sales establishment, not including consumer services. In other words, banks, um, gas stations, and, and other kinds of entities that are primarily service. We're talking about retail sales. So it's a type of retail sales establishment or a restaurant, tavern, bar, or other food service establishment, which is under common ownership or control, or is a franchise and is one of 10 or more other businesses or establishments worldwide, maintaining three or more of the following features. So now we're gonna look at these features. And then when you look at the, um, the it, whoops, back, back up one, please. Thank you. The, the definitions are under two rubrics. One is formula-based food service and the other is formula-based retail. Beneath those are six definitions, which explain this is what a formula-based business is. If you fall within these definitions, you are a formula-based business. If you fall in within three or more of these definitions, then you're a formula-based business. That means you may have a standard array of merchandise or a menu, um, typical um, trademarking, facade of the building, color schemes, typical signage, for example. So there are six of definitional pieces beneath each of those two rubrics. And that sets out the definition for a formula-based business. And these are the tests that have to be met. There are two more articles that are amendments to our, our bylaws. Uh, article two is a footnote um, which would be added to the table of uses after footnote 10, this would be footnote number 11, which simply says that within all C1, that is commercial one districts and within all C2 commercial zoning districts, accepting the most northerly C2 district in Deerfield, formula-based businesses are prohibited. So in other words, in that northerly C2 district, a formula-based business could locate without restraints. They would simply have to meet all the other terms of site plan and any other kind of review that go on. But in the other C1 and C2 districts, they're subject to the tests of, the, uh, those, of those definitions, those six definitions as they apply. I hope that makes some sense. That footnote would then be added under Article 3. It would simply be added to the existing table of uses so that the footnote 11 would, would then be added to uh, retail sales or rental uh, in buildings 4,000 square feet or less. It would be added also to the, uh, the piece that says retail sales or rental, et cetera, in buildings between 4,000 and 30,000 square feet. So these are just the notations in the uh, four categories of principal commercial use. So just to be clear, the permitting for other than formula-based businesses in C1 and C2 remains unchanged. Thus, the people who came before you this evening would not be subject to any of it because they would not fall under that, those categories um, of definition that would make them a formula-based uh, either a formula-based food service or a formula-based retail entity. So that's, um, in brief, the outlines of the articles. And Tali and Lili, if I've left anything out or left it um, unclear, please speak up. No, I think the only thing to articulate is that um, formula-based businesses would still be allowed in those other um, zone districts that are not just the northerly district, but as Debbie said, they would be <laughs> tested as to if they fall under this category and then they would need to make adjustments um, such as not having a standardized facade and or any. So they have options to um, change the blueprint as to how they come in to Deerfield. So it doesn't mean that they can't be um, like in the historic uh, corridor of Deerfield. It just means that they would do it in a way that would be in the keeping 
of the character of Deerfield and what we've set forth to achieve within our master plan and in how the town has decided that it wants to develop. So this is essentially giving the board um, at least one proper tool to achieve that goal. So then Tali, this is Anna Lee. Um, conversely, that would mean a formula based business could look at this list of six criteria and pick two that they could still have, but the other four they would could not have. Is that cool? They would negotiate. Yeah. yeah. And they and presumably they, they would be asked to do things like make change, make changes to their facade or their signage. Um, um, and so any any other elements that they might uh, adjust within those categories. So you could have a Dunkin Donuts that looks like the one in Haydenville, as opposed to the one that looks like it could be in the Midwest somewhere. So Rachel, as you say, negotiate. <laughs> could you elaborate on? Well, that's what I was actually going to be my question is, where does that negotiation happen? I mean, that sounds like a lot of negotiating. Well, depending on what an applicant is proposing, um, it would definitely be a negotiation between the applicant and the planning board, but they would have these set guidelines to pick and choose from. So they should come to you if they want to be within those specific districts um, that is not the Northernly C2 district, already having changed some of the items within this definition. Um, so they could choose to not alter their menu and not alter their, I don't know, I don't have the table in front of me anymore, but the, their signage, signage, but the, the colors or I don't know where, where I was, I, I guess the it's trademark, cool. so they would keep the trademark, but they would change the colors. They would change some of the, those other specs that they, um, and that would, that would be in the purview, I mean, they would do that or that would be in the purview of the planning board to do, how does how does that proceed? I'd be curious, I just, I mean, hey, you know, I passed by that Dunkin' Donuts in, you know, awe. and actually I've seen more and more Dunkin' Donuts that have, that are set in um, like uh, outdoors, you know, outdoor like developments where they've, they're in keeping with other other shops around them, yeah. um, not standing out, such as like what uh, Todd's, you know, proposing with the fence, for example, um, that to stay in line with the uh, um, with the next door storage place. So I don't know, is that something that a planner looks at, or who who, who under whose jurisdictions, whose aegis does that fall? Under the planning boards. Planning board. Aegis, yes. I think the idea would be to make sure that any an applicant from a formula-based business uh, is in possession of these amendments and understands fully that if they wish to locate within other but that most northerly C2 district, that they uh, need to address these issues so that they will fit with the, the character of the town and that, that it would be the request of the planning board, I believe, to uh, to to say show us show us how you're doing that, and to be able to hold them to it. Right. Hey, Debbie, this is Denise. I have a question. So, the um, the Dunkin' Donuts in Haydenville. I mean, I haven't been out there in a long time, but that looks really nice. So I'm just sort of curious how that was. I mean, did you talk to anybody there in the planning board, and what was the process? I'd love to hear. I, I have heard. I did not. Um, okay. And but I I have heard anecdotally. But it was a fairly long process. <laughs> Neely, I'm you sure. need to know, and you've got she had her hand up before. Oh, she's oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I mean I think uh, uh, um, everything's been covered. But I, uh, if I recall correctly, it was Casey who told us that she was. Um, I don't know if she was involved in them, but she certainly was a participant. And she said they were so painful and so long it might sound familiar um and so part of the beauty of doing this amendment to our bylaws is it would i mean the app the developers come in knowing exactly the requirements that they have to meet and they get to decide which of the things they value the most 
and then come to meeting those requirements already. And there's no, you don't have to argue with them about like, that's a hideous red <laughs> or whatever, right? Anyway, so, but it was Casey, I believe. So you're still talking about negotiations. You're still talking about hearing after hearing. You're still listening to butters. You're still doing all that. It's not, um, you're not blocking anything. You're just adding a tool to the toolbox. Yeah. That would be the, uh, that's the idea of this is to give the planning board a tool that, that at least that gives you something that you can point to and say, you have to meet these criteria or excuse me, you have to avoid meeting these criteria. You know, these are, these are the areas in which you are going to have to adjust your appearance and your, uh, uh, in, in ways that, that better fit with our town, but you have a, you have a way to define it. And if you don't have a way to define that, then it's a, uh, it's a very arbitrary, it would seem to me on the part for the planning board to say, do this, do that, you know, change your sign, change your facade, having no, uh, no bylaw to back you up. So that's really the whole idea here is to give you the kind of uh, uh, um, legal uh, tool, regulatory tool that enables you to do that. That's the, that's the intention. Really? So, um, but also in a way to address something that Rachel said that tickled my brain. It, it doesn't, um, so they still have to comply. Let's say they decide they're gonna, they wanna keep their signage, but their signage still has to comply with our other requirements. Oh. So if that's what your question was, it sort of sounded yeah. like so this does not impede that. So I have a, a question using that one in um, Williamstown or whatever that you're talking about. Would would that still be allowed? Because they changed their standardized facade, but I think they still have probably four other standardized things. So they still would be prohibited in Deerfield under this. Is that is that true? Would negotiate those. That's the thing. You get to well, be able to say to them like, okay, well, that's okay. Just change this. But I'm just curious if the one in Williamstown could act because we're using that as an example. Yet, in fact, maybe that still wouldn't be allowed under this under this bylaw. I'm just curious. I I can't tell you enough about what all is. I've not been in that Dunkin' Donuts, so I don't know what changes they may have made in the interior. Maybe Lily knows more. I have not either, but I can um, switch to that image super fast so we can all see. Um, but and my other question quickly was, um, someone mentioned earlier that they would have to change two out of these six, but we're saying they'd have to change three out of the six is the way you have it written, right? They would, they would be having to change four. Four out of six. Yes. So let's, let's go back over those words um, at the top of that. Um, but there were only five I could see. Maintaining. Okay. I'm sorry, there were six on the thing. The image maybe didn't show up quite clearly. Uh, right. um, yeah, number six is standardized signage. Yeah. So the top definition says, um, if they maintain three or more of the following, they are considered formula based. So if they maintain three, or that means they could get rid of three and they could pass. Well, if they still had three, they would still be formula based. Right, but there's six, so that, so, so if they got rid of- They can only have two. They can have one or two. Yeah, so I I guess that's where I, I can't imagine that Dunkin' Donuts has got rid of four of these things. Well, with Rachel, as you're talking about negotiating, would that be as we go back to that picture of the Dunkin' Donuts here, that if there was any negotiation, it would be, well, we don't think you're, you've changed your standardized signage enough. Would that be what we're talking about? If we're saying that there would be some back and forth or just the fact that they don't have that big green or orange and, and red DD, anything less is... Um, but, but well, what one I'm of the difficulties John, in answering your question, is that we don't know what's in the interior. And but, but we know that they have a standardized menu. They have standardized products because that's how that's what they need to do to survive. Um, they have standardized uniforms. They, so. they might, but they might do they might opt out of the uniforms, which would be one of the which would be yet another item. They might opt out of some of the color 
uh, of their decor. They might change that on the interior, which would then get them out of another, would get them out of the fourth. Once again, we know that Haydenville wasn't under any kind of a, a bylaw uh, that we're uh, aware of. And so, um, you know, trying to do these retrospectively is a little bit challenging, but there, I think I can get to four things because I think we can say that they've addressed their signage, their facade for sure. If they did something with uniforms uh, and their interior um, decor, uh, that could get you to four items um, out of that list. So I think they could do it under the bylaw. And I'm, I'm being a little skeptic here, but do we like, we normally would not really care about uniforms worn by employees of a, of a business. So um, I'm talking from the planning board's point of view, we, we care about a lot of things mostly on the outside and don't really like to interfere too much with people's in, inside. So, mm -hmm. so that's, I just questioned some of, some of these, uh, okay. whether, whether that's our business or not, I guess. Uh, uh -huh. Yeah, that kind of just goes along with what defines a formula based business because that's part of how they create their formula doesn't necessarily pertain directly to the site plan review process, right. but it does help make the definition of the formula that they use. But then if you're using it as one of the six criteria and they have to get rid of four of them, that's where it becomes, uh, uh, that's where I'm having the, hmm. the little confusion, I guess. Um, is this definition just created by Dennis, Massachusetts, or is it more broadly used in a lot of um, towns? Uh, let me see if our Jeff Lacey is here. This was uh, taken from Dennis, Massachusetts, where the where there is a bylaw that's very similar to this one. Uh, we worked with uh, Jeff Lacey, who is a well-known, highly regarded land use planner who lives in the area, and he uh, did the uh, the draft of the bylaw for us, and he happens to be available. He's, <laughs> if you would like to hear from him, he could tell us what he knows about how widespread such bylaws are. Um, Jeff, do you want to, if, if may he may he speak, John? Is yes, there? please, Jeff. Uh, good evening, planning board. Um, I've been listening in, and um, um, this was taken from from Dennis because it was a Massachusetts example that was. Um, approved by the attorney general is, and is in use in Dennis. So um, felt that would be a, a, a good place to look for a model instead of some other place in the country. But this is an approach that's listed in the literature, the planning literature that's in use around the United States in various ways. What we took was pretty much what Dennis had. And um, Almost, almost verbatim, because it was something that had passed in Massachusetts. Um, I would imagine that these six criteria could could shrink or expand or be worded differently. Um, it uh, probably has a bit to do with what you consider to be important um, characteristics or things to watch out for in Deerfield. Um, if if uniforms uh, worn in the interior of the store not something that you're particularly interested in, you know, that could be modified or, or, or changed perhaps. But, uh, but yeah, this is what Dennis has on the books. But it's similar to other types of models from around the country and around the state. Thank you, Jeff. And I, I should I'll let people know that this actually came before the planning board uh, several years ago. Um, I remember a previous planning board member was was in favor of moving it forward. I don't know, Rachel, if you remember, John was had this for a while. I, we might have used a different name, but um, and I, I can't actually remember now why it didn't kind of move forward. But um, it, it is something that I know planning boards have talked about in many different towns. So. The, the the other question that that did come up earlier um, was how would negotiation proceed. And I, it, it would proceed depending on what permitting process um, you were in. 
Um, if you were in the um, 4,000 square feet or less, I, I believe we did not change that to special permit. I think that is a, a by right use. So that would actually be between the applicant and the building inspector. The, the next category, 4,000 to 30,000, would be a special permit anyway from, I believe, when, I'm not sure who it's from, but whoever the special permit granting agency um, is, uh, they would do the negotiating, whether it's you or the ZBA. That's the ZBA. Okay, so, so they would be the ones to, to negotiate. And then the largest category, 30,000 to 60,000, in the C2, that would also be a special permit. So the SPGA um, would be negotiating that during that permitting process. So there's no change to the existing permitting process and any negotiations would occur within that already established process. Well, that that raises a question, Jeff. Are we putting this in the in the use regulations that, that site plan looks at versus the special permit regulations which ZBA looks at? Because uh, this, uh, the way it's written, it would be it would be a part of the special permit. Um. Because that's really where that's really where the authority is is in a special permit. But if we're putting in the use table with footnotes, that's what we look at at the at the planning board. Well, the the, the use table pertains to the zoning board as well. Yeah. It just depends right. on who the who the town is designated to do the permit. Um, I mean, our town is. Our, our town divides permits up between uh, planning board and uh, and zoning board. Um, we each do some of them. We do some special permits each board, and we do some site plan review. It just depends. So, so what you're saying is ZBA does all special permits in Deerfield, unless otherwise uh, specified, like like we have with um, solar and marijuana, but. Um... I just, it just needs to be clear whether this is done, this, these would come under site plan review or, or special permit. It shouldn't, they shouldn't come under both. That's not necessary. Right. I would have thought it would have come under the site plan, part of the site plan process of, of site plan review. Um, that, that's the way it's. As opposed to special permitting. The, the footnotes usually are things that we look at, like Max referred yeah. to them earlier tonight, you know. Yeah, the, the, the mm -hmm. special, um, um, it would, it, it, that's what it would seem to me. All right, so we have to work out this. Yeah, we do. You, you know, could I just um, actually uh, interrupt and do a, a, a piece of information that's relevant here? Um, when, so back in August, um, th this uh, proposed bylaws were brought to the, the planning board. And at that meeting, we actually made a couple uh, comments, I think, and and then I think Debbie and some others took them back and made some tweaks to them. What was actually put, then then when we did this public hearing, we have to uh, put public notice out for a public hearing. I, I believe the the old uh, proposed bylaws were, were put out there to the public. So what <clears throat> what I would propose is that um, we, we, we talk about this tonight, and then we have another public hearing a month from now, and we publish and we post the exact wording on the motions on the proposed bylaws that we would like so that we um, make sure we we are all looking at the same thing because right now maybe some people from the public are looking at ones that was a couple months ago which again is, there's not many changes uh, there was some foot there was some notes on the other one that didn't need to be there right um, right they, they were they were actually notes that Jeff provided but yeah. I, I think it would be very helpful if we do uh, re recommence uh, with another hearing on this to have it have a clear sense though of any other changes in wording uh, that need to be um, addressed so that we're uh, in in the meantime if there are any other major things and One the other will be whether it comes under site plan or that's huge permit. right whether it comes under site plan. Yeah. yeah yeah or special permit um, and he has a question too after rachel rachel you good 
Who's that? Who's next? Anne Mary. Anne Mary, sorry. There she is. So yeah, I mean, I think that that's come up at meetings before that we have said that, hey, let's try not to make these regulations and then hand them to ZBA that we tend to want to try to keep them in site plan review. That's what I remember us saying as a planning board, you know, on other occasions. Um, and also, I kind of feel like um, the thing about the uniforms is problematic for a couple reasons. Um, it is the inside of the building, right? So it's, it, and it's what people are wearing. And I get that it's part of a larger definition, but if like Rachel says, it comes down to us and this does under, do, this does fall under our purview and we are the ones negotiating, is that just a gimme then? Because businesses can then say, well, what do you, you know, uh, how is it any of your business? What my employee wears, what t-shirt they put on that day. Also, you know, keeping it business friendly um, T-shirts are one of the first ways that businesses brand themselves um, and create that branding. And, you know, so I don't know. I, I like everything else about it. I find that piece problematic. Annalise. Yes. Annalise, sorry. You're muted. No, you, it is me. Could that be addressed by allowing um, three criteria instead of allowing only two? And then they could pick... And I thought that's what you guys had come to us with. I, I thought so too, yes. The wording would have to be in that first paragraph about formula-based business at the top of the page, that definition it, where it says uh, 10 or more businesses or establishment worldwide. If you say maintaining more than three of the following, then it's three items they have to contend with. Reword in that direction. Right. So is that is that something the the, the proposers are comfortable with, um, Lily? So I'm wondering um, if maybe part of the problem is a conflation of the definition with the requirements. So yes. if, if we say this is what a formula, how we recognize a formula-based business, these six right. things, boom. In order to comply with our character you must, um, and, and maybe we don't even include the uniforms if that's very problematic, but so then it's a separate thing where you say, you can choose three of these things to comply with or whatever. So separate the definition from the um, requirement. Does that make sense? Is it, don't... Yes, so how, how would that look, Lily? I'm yeah. following because it okay. seems like we've already done that because we have separate amendments. Uh, one one is definitional, then the other. Well, but what's already... what's clearly um, not understood is that the it, so the de actual definition of what is a formula based business. Boom! Just make that entirely separate. And okay. then, how does a formula based business come into our town? It it meets. Um, Oh, I see. Not have more than three of these characteristics. So you you're proposing more the way it's presented in our our bylaws. So it's a definition, and then there's a yeah. At the application note. of the definition. How about that? Is that, that you, the actual application of the definition? So in a sense, you're okay. If uh, we, if we, yes, Emily. Change it to three. I mean an unintended consequence could be that they could decide, all right, we're going to um, have our three that we keep be the facade, the signage, and the menu. Yeah. yeah. And that then we, we've ended up with the Dunkin' Donuts that has a different uniform inside. Yeah. Can uh, I? Um, Lori, can you uh, say your name? And your... Oh, Lori Busada, where do I live? 193 North Main Street. <laughs> um, so yeah, based um, back, just building on what Annalie is saying, I'm wondering if really, I, I mean, philosophically, maybe we want to keep businesses local, but the outward appearance, I think maybe our main goal is the facade and the signage. I wonder if we can um, steer it towards those things having to be 
Um, I mean, I, I even wonder if we want to be, if we want to give them some examples of, um, I don't know how, uh, you know, signage, I, I don't know what the wording can be that does not cause um, us to be in a lawsuit, you know, what signage that fits the neighborhood, that's, that's feels, that's a that's little problematic. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, um, all right, hold that thought. Yeah. Jennifer? Um, Max has a question and. Oh, thanks. If I may say something. <laughs> Max, go ahead and then back to Jen. Okay, Max, go ahead. Um, the criteria, to me, if you just said, if you have 10 or more locations, then uh, architectural review is part of the site plan review. And that makes the facade and the signage negotiable. And you don't worry about what they're wearing or what they're serving or what color they painted the inside. Thanks, Max. Jennifer? Um, I, I think I mentioned this once before, but some towns have something called a design review board. Yeah. And, and that, you know, they can make comments, especially for certain areas in town, and you can put that into your bylaws. So certain districts could have um, architectural details and sign signage, size and color and, um, and, and form it on, on that mm -hmm. for, for different criteria, but it's just, it's just a thought. So having heard Max and Jennifer, DRD, do you have any, have you, did you guys talk about that at all? Yeah. Well, I have a couple different thoughts and um, I do love the idea of dressing specifically the architectural, architectural aspect. However, we don't have any specific architectural bylaws um, and creating them would be quite an undertaking. And I don't know if that's something the planning board has looked into or has considered, but um, I feel like that's a whole nother animal that you would have to be dealing with. So as far as what this is concerned, it addresses that partially, but it also continues to address the fact that these are formula businesses. So they're not gonna be the quaint New England businesses. They're not gonna be like the two applicants that you guys just saw earlier before us. And this definition is there so that you can distinguish between those two. Mm -hmm. um, Actually, you can use Treehouse as an example, because do, don't they have more than 10 locations? I don't, I don't so. believe no. that they do. Um, and <laughs> they also, I don't think they have a lot of the standardized aspects. Right. Every, every, now. yeah, I mean, every business usually has some kind of trademark. And that, of course, would be perfectly acceptable to be there. And no one's, no one's, you know, disputing that. But to standardize things and to put things into a formula is a completely different business model. And so you're going to be dealing with a different type of business trying to come into town without any guidelines as to how to do that and what you can then negotiate for um, with them. So there's that piece. I feel like we're, we were getting a little um, stuck on the architectural piece, but there's much more to this than just the architecture. Um, and so again, that's with the, the uniform aspect. That's why it's in there is to help just define what that is. So I think we have flexibility to work with that. However, the planning board may need to um, because really we just wanna focus more on the overall definition and what it would look like for a path for a formula business to be in these specifically zoned districts. And also um, if Jeff is still on, he could probably talk to the fact that um, Bob Ritchie has also reviewed these. Um, and uh, Jeff, are you still with us? I'm here. Would you yeah. mind um, addressing that um, for the board? Um, yeah, I had I had attorney Richie review these and um, and he made a number of suggestions and was okay with them. Um, you know, as far as their their legality in Massachusetts and you know what they did in Dennis did uh, go through the Attorney General so I'm not too worried about that um, I do have a question since the planning board is here um, if if someone today were to come in with a retail uh, sales 4,000 to 30,000 square feet um, it says special permit here in your use table now 
would you also do a site plan review on that? And how would you know that 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 you would be doing a site plan review? Do you do a site plan review for all special permits or some of them or? They're two separate avenues. Um, site plan review is if it's a uh, expansion of more than 600 feet or a change of use. I think are the main two. There might be some other ones there too. Sp special permit is a whole other thing. And again, they look at is is the business uh, that the benefits outweigh the detriments to the town. So, that, so they're two different. Some of the things obviously overlap, but but some of them don't. So so if it, if it was a brand new a brand new building on a vacant site, you would not do site plan review? No, that's an expan a new construction or an expansion of more than 600 square feet is a, is a site plan review. Okay, so <laughs> even though your use table says special permit and the footnote goes next to, to that, um, you're still in there for site plan review. So, so the, the whole, everything in here is, site, well, I shouldn't say everything, I guess, if it's, if it's um, but site plan review, Right, is, is expansion um, or change of use. And then the special permits there in case it also needs a special permit. Okay, so, so we have to put the footnote somewhere and special permit is all it says. So that's where we put the footnote. Um, well, no, the, the footnotes are over in the column under the principal use. Yeah. So that pertains to site plan review and potentially site a special permit, yeah. They're, they're, the footnotes are in the use table, uh, at least the way I've got them here. In, nope. in, yeah, they're in the use table. Yep. And the, the way I'm looking at it is you would still do site plan review for anything that you'd normally do site plan review for, right. even if it happened to be a formula-based business. You'd still right. So ultimately it would be a special permit from the ZBA but, but you would not be cut out of a site plan review where you could also be looking at these criteria. Well, that's the question. Would we or, or would we not? That we, we wouldn't, it's how, it's how we put it into the bylaws. We need to be clear about that. Yeah, I think our intention originally was that it would be inserted in um, the footnote so that it would fall under the planning board's purview with the zoning bylaws, but it would not negate the fact that if there was a building that was um, 4,000 square feet or larger, or the ex um, expansion that you talked of, John, would, it would still have to go for their special permit, of course. Yeah. So we envision this as being a tool for an elected planning board. Yeah. Through the site plan review process. Right. And, and probably what your site plan review um, section of your bylaw says that, that you're looking at proposals for their uh, for their compliance with all aspects of the zoning bylaw. Yeah. And this would be one of them. Yeah. Right. And and we to tell you the truth, as some of you who have been at countless meetings. <laughs> about a potential formula-based business. We have talked about signage and facade and you know we, we have negotiated some of these things with certain businesses, the latest two being Cumberland Farms and the Dollar General. So, right. um, but we don't have any sort of teeth to it, I think is the issue. And so what we're wondering is, do we wanna put it more, you know, put it more firmly into the bylaws and not just leave it up to negotiations? Jim has his hand up. Jim. Um, I wondered if um, Max Antes could re, Tim Hilchey, uh, 330 Greenfield Road, sorry. Um, if Max Antes could restate the, the, <clears throat> the, ob the observation he made, because I think that's where the, the teeth might come in. Um, if a formula-based business as defined by the definition wants to be in the, the the historic Deerfield corridor or what are the Route 5 corridor, then they would be subject to some sort of architectural design review process. And I don't know how, how complicated that needs to be, but if Max could speak to that, that would be good because he, he stated it quite simply. Max, you want? Uh, yes. Um, I just it said that if you have 10 or more locations and you're subject to architectural review as part of site plan review, 
So you get to look at the signs and the facade and it just takes the menu and the interior paint colors and the uniforms off the table. It's just, you're more design, you know, concerned with what, what people see when they drive by. So, and maybe instead of calling it architectural review, you refer to it as the, the, the review of the facade and signage. I mean, they were the, the, the two things, Anna Lee, that you pointed to. Um, but I just wanna point out that if you were to do that, then you need to have some of those specific ones to review. It can't be an ambiguous, whatever you decide, there has to be right. something there. Right, and as Holly was saying earlier too, we're trying to get away from um, subjectivity. We'd like it to be as unnegotiated as possible. And I so mean, right. yeah. sorry, go ahead. There's oh. some formula businesses such as you know Cumberland Farms that have intentionally changed um, their facades to fit New England by their choice, by their own branding. But there's other businesses as we know that do not do that, do not have a desire to do that and don't wanna spend the money to do that. And it's like pulling teeth to try and work with them. So that's where this comes in as a tool automatically um, paving the path in the way that we are choosing to guide it as opposed to pulling teeth with a potential applicant to do most basic things like put in dormers or you know, not have bright colored neon signage <laughs> no neon allowed um, <laughs> but in our current um site plan review we have um 5467 minimize unreasonable departure from the character and scale of building in the vicinities as seen from the public ways that's and that's very it's it is no there's no teeth to that it's very arbitrary so i think that's where we're trying to figure out if right. we can build on Thanks, that Denise? Has some. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that's a little too nebulous. First of all, I think that this should come under the planning board's purview. Secondly, I'm, you know, I think to to stay in keeping with the character of the town, I think we really need to look at this, the facade and the signage. And then third, I really would like to explore a little bit more what Jennifer said. I'd like to have a little more information on that because I don't think that's such a bad idea, having a design committee or, you know, however she described that. And I'd like to see how, you know, how does that function along with the planning board? You know, I, I, I just, I'm sorry. Yep, no, Debbie. I'm sorry. Um, I was just thinking about this idea, going back a little bit to what Max said, I'm thinking of a hybrid. Mm -hmm. That what we needed to be able to say is, you know, if you have 10 or more businesses and you have these aspects, these several aspects that we've got outlined here, your trademark, your da-di-da, the, you know, facade and so on. If you have those three or uh, what are we going to say, uh, three or more of the following of those elements, then you have to uh, submit to... Um, you then have to, then you get them to work on their signage and their facade so that it fits. And we have to sort out how we, how we operationalize that. But you, you could use that as the principal thing to address uh, when you've identified them under those six rubrics or however we can leave out uniforms if you want or whatever it is. So it isn't that they have to change among those things but they have, to, they have to actually alter their signage and their facade for fit. And then how we define that is going to be the tricky part, I think, isn't it? Hmm. Well, you know, Debbie, this is Denise again. You know, instead of, you know, reinventing the wheel, I mean, you, you know, uh, you cited Manchester, Vermont, I think for one, yeah. you also yeah. cite, uh, cited Dennis, Massachusetts. I mean, there are other towns that do have more standardized size signage, I think maybe Beverly Mass, where we went to school, but I think, you know, that might be a couple of phone calls just to find out how did you do that? You know, how did you work with your planning board or your ZBA? I mean, instead of trying to guess how people did it, I mean, I'm sure that there would, I would think that there would have been a process. I would um, 
Well, I just, uh, if I may, there are some different places that um, have similar results from different avenues. Um, Woodbury, Connecticut is an example, but they are a registered historic district. They only have banks and gas stations that are formula business and everything else is a local business. But I believe that is under um, zoning that has to do with being a registered historical district. So it's a different way of um, kind of having that sort of path. As far as these are concerned with the formula based business, um, it sounds like we're all acknowledging that we also need some real architectural review of some sort. Um, and I know I don't wanna speak for all of DRD. I am the chair, but we have a board and I know that DRD would definitely be interested in exploring that. I just don't know how that can fit into what this particular um, bylaw is, but um, we, you know, we're definitely very interested in that as well. If the planning board wants to um, brainstorm on any way to create um, some additional architectural bylaws as well. I mean, it does seem, them, as we talk more about this, it, it seems like the architecture is the, and signage is sort of the bigger issues than some of the other things. Yeah. And so are there different ways to get to the same? Well, and it occurs to me that even if you open up a one of a kind, um, I don't know, um, what do you call those uh, rooms where you get locked in or a rollers, roller rink or something, you know, whatever that business is, we want them to um, fit into mm. the character of our town. So I don't know how we define that. I think. Um, is, <clears throat> could we have an architectural review committee or body be a subcommittee of the planning board? that could be rotated so every time there's a site plan review there's three of us that go and do that and the next time there's one there's another three of us that go do you know what i mean so it would always be a subcommittee of the planning board because once again if we're sitting here and taking the time to make these rules why would we hand over the reins to anybody else no offense mm -hmm. um but that would be a way that that sort of body could be managed um, but I was just going to try to um, chime in one quick thing. We could also kind of build up a, um, a folder of appropriate things that do fit into town. I mean, I don't love the idea of a storage facility, but the way that they made their facade and their um, brick walkway and the fence and everything makes it acceptable. <laughs> um, so we could look, we could have a whole set of um, things that do meet what we're looking for in Deerfield. But we have some, Deb, before, Deb, before you talk, we have a few hands up that let me get to. Um, oh, sure. Phil and Nancy Hayes, is there some comments? You're only getting Phil, you're not getting Nancy, but- Ah, uh, damn, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. <laughs> Very quickly, uh, one, I really admire the professionalism that all viewers are, are exhibiting. I think that's wonderful. But two, I would just suggest that you be careful about reinventing when you have something that works somewhere else and has probably stood up to a court challenge or two, mm -hmm. I would say that it's important to get something in place and not extend the process by designing something that's so unique to Deerfield that it's gonna be very vulnerable. And uh, this is one that apparently has worked. That, that's my input. Very good point, thank you. I had a couple of comments, but Debbie, did you? Uh... No, let it go. Let, let some others speak. Any, anybody else? So I had a, a couple. One quick thing was you. What's that? Is there opportunity for public comment? Yes. We, um, sorry, we've been in public comment. I didn't declare that very, very evidently. So yes, we would like to hear from the public. Um, go ahead. Uh, so this is Chris Harris, and um, I really appreciate this initiative and all the detail that's gone into it, et cetera. But it all hinges on leveraging off a master plan. And frankly speaking, as best as I know, the master plan is 20 years old. The one that I flipped through in four inches of paper in town hall 
was dated 2000. And so I don't even think we have an updated master plan. And so to start um, tailgating other initiatives and other bylaws on top of the master plan at this point, it seems like the cart before the horse in terms of what we have to do here. And so as, as much as I appreciate the diligence that we put into this situation, I actually um, can't support bylaw changes right now. It's like, I think we need to go back to what my father always said, first things first. And when is the master plan going to be updated? And when are all of us going to start doing things accordingly after that's updated? And so I think there's a bigger issue here. There's a bigger umbrella issue here. And I really don't think that's being addressed uh, in terms of exactly what this community is and where it's going and what the strategies are and what the, the vectors of, of those um, operational parameters are in terms of where we're going to go as, as a town, as a community. And so I think that's missing here. We're like, like patching on bylaw changes and yet we're referring to a, a master plan that really is outdated and obsolete. All right, not thank you. Totally obsolete. Good, good point, thank you. Um, Lily? Hi, um, to um, address his point, I have two things I wanna say. Address his point is, I actually disagree with his analogy um, because I think it's actually the cart is finally catching up to the horse. The horse ran out 20 years ago <laughs> and we're, and we've been trying to implement this vision, but without the tools to do it. So I respectfully disagree and think that it is important to implement this. And I absolutely agree that we should have another master planning process, but I don't think that we should wait because clearly um, we are being identified as a community that is desirable. And I think we want to, to stay desirable. We want to use this to continue that growth in a way that we like. Um, but also I did have a question about the implementation of an architectural review subcommittee as part of the process. Would, would we have to make another bylaw to say that that's what you have to do? Is that what we would do? I think we need to do more research on that. And okay. um, yeah, it's, I think probably different towns have done it different ways, but it would have to be stated somewhere. Okay. Um, Thank you. Jennifer, you have. Yeah, it would be in the, the zoning bylaw that it would say that you would have, um, well, I'm just speaking in for the town that I used to work for. Yeah. So um, they, it would just, it would be in the, in the chart that would say you would need to have the opinion of the DRB design review board and it had certain criteria. And then you would also have like the sign bylaw that was in the zoning bylaw. So it kind of, and then it was districts. So if it was, let's say downtown Deerfield and close to a common, then the color may be taken into consideration of a building. So you didn't have something that was whatever color, that's a bad color to somebody, I don't know. <laughs> Um, you know, solid black building or purple or whatever, polka dots. Um, you know, so, I mean, you build upon it so that you're, you're stating something, but you're not eliminating business from town. So we don't want to say people can't be there, but you also want to have a say on size and look and color and, you know, maybe some architectural designs, maybe, you know, depending on the area. Um, Amherst has a historical district. So that's another criteria. So you have like layers and the further you go out, maybe it's it's less stringent, you know, from, from where it's down. But you know, you, you build upon it and um, and you set criteria that the design review board was is discretionary board, but yet the planning board would then listen to the advice of the design review board and and then come up with something that is everybody's like 
you know, and, and then the business can fill it. All right, um, we're gonna wrap this up because I think we're gonna continue it, but we wanna have some clarity um, as we do that. But if I could just make, make one um, quick quick observation, um, as during our discussion over the past hour, a couple times some of us, and I might even say this, um, is that we take what, the, we talk about the character of the town and what current residents want the character of the town to be. I think we should be careful with the language because that can also be associated quite a bit with discrimination. And there's a lot of towns over the years that they kept the character the way the current residents wanted it and they don't change and they don't allow new people in. And, and I think it's really important that we wanna be a welcoming town, more diverse. Some of these are my own opinions. I put it out there. Um, so I just would not want any language uh, that, that says, you know, it has to stay the exact way the current residents want it. And that's not what this bylaw says, but in the discussion that comes up a few times. So I just wanted to put that out there. No. Yes, Debbie. I really, just, just to, to get back around again to this topic, I, I, I think our, our issue is formula-based business and not so much the, the general architecture of the town and the whole look of the whole community and you know the whole look of any new business that comes in. I, I don't see that that wasn't what was behind uh, Deerfield for Responsible Development's impulse in working on this uh, draft definition and set of amendments. It was really around the issue of formula of businesses that we were pretty clear, I had a clear, pretty clear understanding that on a, a, one of the town votes that came up in 2010, which restricted the by right size of buildings, part of the motivation for that in 10 years, just 10 years ago was so that the Route 510 corridor did not become like Route 9 in Hadley, if I may uh, make that comparison. But that was part of the motivation. So that's, that's just the background a little bit for why, why we got going down this trail at DRD was was around the idea of the formula based businesses and the the issue as Tolly laid out at the very beginning of protecting this these making a, a good space for some of these unique and interesting initiatives that are arising in the town as we saw examples tonight so i, I guess i'd just like us to veer back more to those questions as we go forward and and if it, it, it uh, ends up uh, having requiring some kind of review around facade and signage, um, great. But I but my thought is have it apply to the formula based business question, not all business generally. Yeah. Um, can I just add to that quickly? Sure. And so a big, uh, yeah, a big part of reason why DRD is proposing this is because we have been in the trenches for the um, proposal for a retail store that is a formula-based business, as many of you know. And we have seen the difference of what it is to have a formula-based business applicant come to a small town like Deerfield in comparison to some of these local business applicants that have been here. We know that, you know, even Cumberland Farms, there was a lot of issues that, ar that arose from that new site on the corner there in five and 10. Um, so this, we see as a really positive tool for the planning board to use to specifically deal with formula-based businesses coming into town because it's a very different process. They have a very different agenda and a very different way of doing things than our local businesses do. They don't come in with the idea of being a community partner. And this is a way that they have to come in with the idea of being a community partner. Denise, thanks, Tom. Yeah, um, no, I, I appreciate everything that you've said. And, you know, I, I guess my concern is, well, first of all, I appreciate what Chris Harris said, but I think that they are two different topics. Um, I think we should really look at a new master plan or looking at reviewing the master plan. I agree with that. Um, I also agree with, I think this is different with the formula-based stores. Uh, so I think that is a separate topic and I, I don't think that the master plan has to happen before that. And then I also um, go back to what Phil said and I totally agree with that. We don't need to reinvent the wheel. And so what I'm co concerned about is what are our next action steps and who's going to do that? And I'd like to have some more information on how the other towns went about doing that. 
So I'm thinking we've had some good discussion. I'd like to keep this proposed bylaw on the table for now until we have any updates on it, because um, I think that's important. It's It's been put before it and we're in discussion. So let's um, continue this with this and we'll get the, um, the cleaner copy, Debbie, out before yep. the next meeting. Um, and then I think have some discussion about um, some of these alternatives. We'll get the next meeting. We can talk more about what this architecture thing might mean. Um, but the other thing is the planning board, this comes through the planning board. We hold public hearings. All we do is um, recommend it to town meeting. We don't, we don't approve or disapprove this. We just recommend it and forward it to the annual town meeting, which at this point potentially could be in April, I guess. Um, it's, it, it's a proposed bylaw. So we really just wanna make sure we go through the right steps, um, you know, keep it on the books until we do make any kind of changes. Does that make, does that make sense? Lili? Uh, what, what is our deadline for, so I'm, I'm trying to understand the process that you're talking about, John. Yeah. Um, so you all are looking for us to bring back to you um, any follow-up we have with communities like Dennis um to what end to find out um how what the effect has been or um what the what the process is that they when they've implemented this yes the rising regional not area. process it's the process that yeah. we know uh, i think we want to see this you know mm -hmm. past mm -hmm. the the initial bump you know i think that what tolly is uh you know everybody's pointed out that this gives a formula business an understanding of what they're walking into. Yes. But what are they walking into? Like then what is the next thing look like? And we could kind of anticipate it, but since this has been um, someplace before, could we find out more about how that looked? And Haydenville's a good example um, without the formula-based I think, right? And, without energy bylaws been making notes on these exactly these points Rachel and Denise just so you know so then but if we uh, we go and make these phone calls and everything um, we have an end deadline in order to meet the town meeting thing right so what is that so then we can walk back from when do we when do we meet you guys again when and how many times do you think do you anticipate wanting to meet and things well one of the things I would say too is that you, you want this to get out as to because we're not the approval right we, we don't approve it so the more this is a this is becomes a pr thing right. really i mean you you want people to hear what you're saying and understand it that's part of the clarity that you know we're pushing for here so that people come to town meeting to say oof this is something we want to get behind um you know, we want to be behind it too, uh, I guess, you know, we, we, that's what we're deciding, yeah. but, but, um, but. And I think one of the things that you should really clearly delineate is the definition and then the criteria. So yeah. That, that seemed to be the thing that hung us up tonight. Like, how do you define it? And then once they come here, what are we going you know what I mean? What are we looking at specifically the outside, not the inside, those sorts of things. So I see, you know, keeping it separate, and then defining what each one is, I think would be helpful to me. Agreed. And, and I would think it would be obviously helpful to have a recommendation from the planning board going into annual town meeting. So, so you know, we could do this, um, you know, we could put it on our January meeting or, or maybe the February meeting. And because we still have time before, um, Lily, I think it would have to be kind of finalized in March to get on the, an April warrant. To get on the warrant. And I don't know if it's April or May or June. But. So then are we bringing it to town meeting with a citizen petition? Is that what we need to do if you guys aren't, or do you guys recommend it to town meeting from the planning board or what, how does that happen? That's a good question. And I think, are you guys also talking to the select board about bringing it, putting it on the warrant or? Last time we had select board people here, we might have a joint meeting. Yeah. Because, um, it, it, yeah. I mean, it doesn't have to, but if it helps. Good. Again, my understanding more is behind if, it, the better. Yeah, my understanding is if we do it as a citizen petition, then it goes on to the warrant. Yeah. Sort of period, right? I mean, but we'd much rather clearly have the select board and the planning board supporting. Yeah, absolutely. So, 
We, that's what that's what I'm trying to find out. What is it that we need to do to make you guys love us? <laughs> we're we're sticking to the bylaw here, the proposed oh, bylaw. We spent so much time together over the last three years. Are you kidding? We're I spent more time with you on Monday nights than my own family. <laughs> The love is there. The love is there, Lily. The love is there. <laughs> All right. So, how, but how do we make this happen? That's what we, if anything that you guys can tell us that you need. Like Mary, Anne Mary was really clear, which is great. Yeah, and, I think that's the main thing. Um, um, understanding yeah. the process. I think yeah. just looking at the alternatives that Max talked about might be helpful. Jennifer knows something about that, just to see if if those are alternatives or that's a separate issue. Maybe we we need to define that. Well, do you think someone, um, maybe Jennifer, could find out if 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 you all decided you wanted to have an architectural review component yeah. of your board, then then maybe Jennifer could figure out it, how would we do it in our town that way? What would be the legal requirements? Because that sort of seems beyond the scope of of our abilities, especially with town hall closed. That sounds fair. I think I don't know. If, I don't want to say Jennifer will do it, but I think. We could <laughs> I can reach out to you know other towns and other you know past colleagues and 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 get an idea of how they went about to get something like that and bring some ideas and then um, see if that's something the board wants to consider and you know just something different to look at and see how people um, go about you know starting that process. Sure. One quick thought. It's Tim, and then we're going to wrap it up. Yeah, one quick thought. Um, to go back and, and back up what Tali's saying, this is like a brick, and we're building a house, and another piece of the house might be the, the next component that we're asking Jennifer to look into. Right. But if you don't put one brick down, you can't put the next brick down because they're sort of, in order to build the whole thing, to really belabor this, metaphor or whatever I'm doing, um, piece by piece. If we get this piece in, what we need to really make sure is that when it's presented to the town at town meeting, that it's understandable to people and that they can get behind it. And um, if people here are confused, maybe what we need to do is figure out what's confusing them and then make it not confusing. Right. And maybe that's how it's sold or packaged or presented but I do see a lot of basic, what are we doing here? So that's a signal that we need to think a little more about this. Uh, so anyway. Very good. So do we have a motion to continue? <laughs> yes, I move that we continue. I'm so tired. A long day. I can't even make sense anymore. <laughs> I said, I'm sorry. Rini seconds it, or does Rini want to really oh, say yes. something? Go ahead, Rini. Sorry. She's muted. I've been to other meetings, Zoom meetings, where there's they're acrimonious, rude, very unbusinesslike. So thank you. As a resident of this town, I really appreciate the effort you do and just the cooperation you all are, are, are showing us. Keep our town the way we want our town. Thank you. <laughs> and good night. And stay well. Um, so do we have a second? Yes. Okay. I thought you made it. I seconded. I and Mary just seconded and Mary it. Said, <laughs> any more discussion? Um, and second, and it will be um till when? Till uh, January or February? January. I think January. we keep the pedal to the metal. I don't think any, there is any reason not to just. All right. Going. January fifth. All those in favor? Um, January fourth. Fourth. Oh, really? January fourth. <laughs> Sorry, January fourth. Denise. My birthday again. Yes. Uh, nice. Celebrate, nice. Rachel. Rachel. <laughs> yes, Rachel. Blank. Annalie. Annalie, yes. And Mary. And Mary Cloutier, yes. Max. Max Angie's, yes. John, wait, yes, six to nothing. Wow, we are so unanimous. Woo. Um, I have two ZBA meetings this week, so let's go. <laughs> I, I just have one other business that might be of interest to some other people if they want to stay on, but... Oh. Um, Chris, we had we had said we're not going to do the accessory dwelling tonight. It just it didn't fit in. So can we? Sorry about that. Can we do that in another meeting? Um, yes, I guess we can. <laughs> We've already closed it. 
It seems as though uh, the, the attention span must be kind of on, on low at the anyway. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's dinner. So the only new business I have is I would like to make a um, announcement to my fellow planning board members that um, my wife and I have bought a house in another town. And we I don't I don't know exactly when we're going to leave, but I won't be a Deerfield resident a few months from now. So I just wanted to give people a heads up. My understanding is that um, select board can appoint a member if it if they can no longer serve. Um, so I'll, I'll definitely still be a resident here on January 4th. And after that, I'm not sure. So I just wanted to put that out of of I've told a few people and they were delighted. Are you going to tell I say that? Someone? Rachel, can I say you were delighted? No. <laughs> what, what town, John? Gill. Gill. But I, I've already been asked to be on committees. I said no so far. So. <laughs> well, man. congratulations on your new house. Thank you. Yeah. Congratulations, but you're going to be very missed. John. Oh my so gosh. We're not all yeah. super happy, but like we're happy for we're you. Not super and I will happy. I will I will miss all this, but I, I think we've done some good work. And um, I know this planning board is terrific and they'll carry on certainly without me. But anyway, that's um we'll all see each other on um December 28th. We have a meeting for the other site plan review, and then January 4th. Right? <laughs> Any other business? Motion to adjourn. Denise. I make a motion to adjourn. I Rachel, second. I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> Moved and seconded. Um, uh, um, all in favor, Denise. Yes, Denise is in favor. Rachel. Rachel also is in favor. Annalie. Annalie, yes. And Mary, Max. Yes, yes. John yes, Lee, yes. yes. Uh, meeting is closed. Thank you very much, everybody. Have a good Thank night. Thank you. Thank you.